It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots. And uh, today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Turn your great idea into a reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind. With beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything, you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. And if you do get stuck, Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support is there to help. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website our domain. Do we have church announcements, Schultz? Yo, we do have church announcements. Um, December, no, not December, October 26th, I'll be in Palm Beach, the uh, Palm Beach Improv. Then the 1st of November, I will be in Chico, California, El Rey Theater. Then the 2nd and 3rd, Sacramento, those shows are almost sold out. Um, make sure you go check those out right there. And then I'm coming back East Coast, Norwalk, the- uh, was it the Wall Street Theater, Norwalk, Connecticut, the 14th, um, the 16th, the Wilbur in Boston, first show sold out, second show, we got some ticks left, and then the 22nd, New York City Town Hall, first show sold out, second show almost sold out, so get those tickets immediately, theandrewschultz.com for more shows. I'm going um, to be at South Carolina State this weekend, okay. <clears throat> South Carolina State homecoming, you know, uh, South Carolina State is my mother's alma mater. Um, another black woman who was very influential in my life, Miss Nicole Brevard. She uh, graduated from South Carolina State. Uh, I believe she works at South Carolina State now, too. That's that's my partner. But I'm going to be down there all weekend. I'm going to be down there Friday doing a q and A. I'm not sure where the Q&A is at. I just know it's on South Carolina State's campus somewhere. And you know we'll be talking about my favorite subject, mental health. And then um, Saturday, I'll be at um, the game with the president of South Carolina State. And um, I got I got an announcement I'm going to be making, man. Ooh. Yeah, I got an announcement I'm going to be making. So. Ooh. Yeah, I see. I can't wait to tell everybody what it is next weekend after it's done. Okay. But I'll be making that announcement at South Carolina State this Saturday. And on October 28th, I'll be in Rock Hill, South Carolina. I'll be at Winthrop University, okay, uh, having a conversation on improving mental health awareness with my homegirl, Tanitra Michelle Williams. Uh, you know her of Destiny's Child. Uh, Marianne Williamson. I guess we still call Marianne Williamson a presidential candidate, right? No. Yeah. Author. You know, author. definitely New York Times bestselling author. author. Love Marianne. Uh, she's a cancer like me and myself. So we're doing this event called Tell Your Story. And it's free food, free conversation. It's free to everybody. It's from 2 to 4 p.m. at Winthrop University on October 28th. So I'll see y'all there. Go get it. And also check out See the God YouTube page. Oh, listen, listen, man. I'm going to tell you something about YouTube. See the God's YouTube page. Yes, YouTube.com backslash See the God. I should have believed in myself. So when I put the girlfriend's I'll, interview I out, I should have believed fucking, myself. No, I don't even want to have this conversation. I'm a, I'm, how long I known you? And how long I've been telling you to do this? No, you're right. You're right. But I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna tell. Listen, this is just the thing. Uh, anxiety. You know what I mean? Like I I put the girlfriend's out interview uh-huh. out right. Put it on my YouTube page exclusively. Uh-huh. And I'm like I said, I've been we've been doing Breakfast Club for seven years. So you 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 want that million in a day? You're used to that two hundred thousand in an hour. Patience. You know what I'm saying? You didn't have no patience. And I'm looking like, come on, bro. I'm like yo, forty thousand. Come on, bro. I'm like, it's already noon. So I panicked. I'm like, Nick, <laughs> throw it up on Breakfast Club page. Right? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, throw it up on Breakfast Club page too, man. Cause I want them to get that look. You know, our girlfriends mean something to me. Yes. I know what they're trying to do. I know they're trying to get a, a movie, a miniseries. They're trying to, you know, get we, we want to get interest from right. networks and shit. Next thing I know, man, I'm sitting at 400,000. You know, and then breakfast on club, which page? On my page. That's will you just let? Why don't you text me? Why don't you fucking ever just text me, and I'll tell you exactly what's gonna happen. You know, you gotta give it a little bit to hit the algorithm. Nah, I know, I know, I know. And breakfast club, breakfast club page had like four hundred something thousand too. But I was so just now like almost at a milli. But you need to be patient. And that's what bro. I, I should have just kept it all on my page, and I just got this. But th- but th- is that a weird way of thinking? Meaning like, no, we've all done that. Yeah. We've all had that fear. We've had that fear. Like I had that fear when I split off the brilliant idiots from my page yeah. and when I split off uh, Flagrant 2 from my page yeah. and create their own pages I'm like but will people be able to see it will we still get the numbers etc yeah, yeah, you yeah, know what yeah. you gotta fucking leap you, you gotta, gotta leap bro you gotta be patient. and you gotta be patient and look yeah. both our pages already up to 40 50k something like that the I'm numbers at, are at, already up to I'm episodes at, I'm at 30k now I think it's 40. gonna go it's yeah. gonna go you keep on putting content out there like I see y'all are doing it's gonna go I'm just excited I'm not gonna lie they shit it on uh, they shit it on you bro they shit it on Angelo what 
<laughs> it was like what is it? It was like yo, that vlog he is. He said right. Angelo. He didn't say Andrew. No, Angelo. I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they don't like, know who he is. They said, man, Angelo, come here real quick. This is a good learning lesson for you. Here don't take go. it personal. This here is, we don't go. Take here we go. I'm just saying, I put up a vlog from my, because I, I interviewed uh, the cast of Blackish this past Sunday. I was mm -hmm. at Paley Fest. I'm actually putting that whole interview up, but uh, Angelo did a vlog, I, vlog. I thought the vlog was cool. Somebody said to me, yo, this vlog is all right. But this shit ain't slapping like Alex Media. Right. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just telling you what they said <laughs> in the comments. Alex, why <laughs> you wrote that, bro? That's fucked up. Oh, man. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let him live, bro. And it Let took me a while. I was like, what the fuck is Alex Media? It takes Because it was time. three X's, and I was like, oh, Alex. Mm -hmm. Just telling you. Just putting a little pressure on you. That's all. Mm -hmm. Step the game up. I'm with it. Man, if you with it, I'm with it. Um, I just feel like. Wait, I didn't ask you to talk. That was, yeah. that was I didn't ask you to get to some of this heat. Yeah, we know That's why all. you said that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> More shooting. Let's talk. I just wanted them to see who they was insulting on, <laughs> on Instagram. But no, it, it does. It, it's, it's like, it, it is, it's not stressful. It is, and it's almost like, you know what? You just got to tell yourself, bro, you're building something. That's it. And yes. I don't ever have expectations. I don't ever look and say, yo, this is, I don't ever feel entitled for anything. And, and, it feel, and by the way, it feels good. I'm not gonna lie. I did the four hundred thousand on girlfriends. That shit felt like a good four hundred thousand. And then the, the shit I did with uh, Netflix, the Ti and Chance interview, that shit jumped to like three hundred plus thousand. So much so that somebody in the YouTube comments said, "Oh, he paid for those views. How they jump up so fast?" A few days took a, it took a while. You know what I'm saying? Put up the the, the vlog for Blackish. That shit did like twelve thousand, thirteen thousand views. I liked that. It felt it felt it felt good. You know what I'm saying? I'm so proud of you. So, I'm so happy for you, and I love this. So we'll I see. really love this. And I made $100 already. <laughs> <laughs> well, you going to find out real quick how little YouTube pays. No, by the way, that, that's what somebody... Yo, out real quick. So, there, there was a comment under one of my videos, and they was like, remember when Charlotte used to shit on YouTube and say um, there was no money in it? First of all, I never shitted on YouTube, but I did say there was no money in it. I still don't know if there's any money in it, but it's not about the money. It's about... Being it's able about, yeah. to create your own content and putting your own content out and connecting with people on that level. So the next thing that we're going to start doing for you, and you let me know if you're committed to this YouTube thing. I mean, mm -hmm. you have to start, start consistency and you have to establish numbers. But what we'll start doing is we'll start getting our own branded sponsorships like we do with Dropping In, the Dropping In series I do. And we'll start doing those for your content as well. What's the Dropping In series? That's my vlog. So the travel vlog that I do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got so you, got every you, got time you, got I'm you, got in you, got a new you. city doing the tour, I also do this travel show as well. And we get those sponsored by, you know, various sponsors. And and that's how you create a TV show. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah, why yeah. am I going through a middleman that is television when I have direct contacts to the sponsors because we're reading the ads here? When I'm creating my own show, yeah. if you have an interview with girlfriends, why is that not brought to you by BetterHelp? Why is that not brought to you by Squarespace? Oh, yeah. So getting why is that, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and that's what we'll facilitate. Yeah, absolutely. That's why we built out the ad agency as well. Yeah. So it's like, I I realize in order to really run this game, you got to own every piece of the pipeline. Absolutely. And that's what we're fucking doing here. I will say this. I so, also, Chris, you're fired. He looks fired. <laughs> Don't he look fired? He looks like, look like, look like I wish that y'all could have saw that. Door. He looked like his key card didn't work. Yeah, My God. You know what else is interesting about that, though? I do realize I don't like the document. And this was so good about life, right? It's all good. Yeah, I, I, I like... You can really curate your content, right? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not one of these people that likes to show every aspect of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not the guy that's going to walk in the, the lobby and take a picture of the fucking NBC sign. I'm not doing that stupid shit. I'm not right. I'm not saying, hey, I'm here, I'm here. And, and like, we did a vlog the other day, and I had shot a movie. I, I had a scene in a movie, and right. it's a big movie. It's a right. movie that's coming out, focus films, all oh, that. And shit. I was like... I'm like, I'm not posting that. Good. We did a whole vlog from the movie set and everything, and I, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not posting you, that. You don't post that yet. Yes, you do it. You do it when the movie comes out next fall. You don't know if you're gonna be cut out the movie. That is very fucking true. You know what I'm saying? What you do is when the movie is coming out true. and there's all this buzz about the movie and everybody loves the movie, they're interested in the movie. Then you drop the vlog because yeah, yeah, yeah. what I do after I watch a TV show, I'm not getting cut out though. Listen, very poignant scene. That's what we all think. <laughs> 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 That's what, I was cut out the no, Halloween my, movie so fast, bro. You was in Halloween? Yeah. Get the fuck out I of was, here. Yeah. What the fuck yeah, happened? Dude. I never knew that. I was in Hall I'm in the extra scenes they put in the end, but I thought there's no way you could cut me out because the scene I thought was very important to the plot line. You oh. find out why certain people live and certain people die with yeah, me. Yeah, well, let me shut the fuck up then. I didn't that, know. 
Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. It seems like it's moving the story forward. That, yeah. <laughs> but sometimes they just be moving the story yeah, forward. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, so that's what I'm trying to say. But that vlog is perfect content because it's like, oh shit, Charlemagne was in this movie and you're curious about the movie, you want to see more? You know how many, you know what I do all the time? I'll watch a TV show and then I'm not done with it. And then I'll go on YouTube and watch other people talk about the fucking TV show that I just watched because I'm not done. Yeah. You think I wouldn't watch a movie and see you in it and then want to see you go behind the scenes fucking with the directors, mm -hmm. fucking with all these people, etc. Ah, this is so good. I'm I hyped. get it. I get it. Yeah. Listen, I'm just, all I'm saying is, Angelo, hold it down until I find me a black video guy. I'm black. Okay. Oh, now you're black. <laughs> All right, now you're black. <laughs> when you were peeing on the fucking pickle jar in the, in the grocery store, that was your white boy fun, huh? Now you're a black man. <laughs> right here. So what are we doing? Are we going to continue? Are we going to... Okay, so basically what's going to happen later at some point in time in this episode is we uh, did an a interview with Joe Coy. Joe Coy. And uh, Charlamagne was finishing a breakfast club, so he comes in about maybe 10 minutes into the interview. So yes. if it seems weird that he's not there for 10 minutes, that's what it is. We'll put that episode we'll put that somewhere in the episode but uh let's keep on going where right, we're at right it. now let's go man um, let's start let's start with lebron james well first of all i just want to say yeah uh you know um that this podcast is is brought to you by the great leader jinping of china and that we would in no way <laughs> go against it might be where would these mics me <laughs> <laughs> where would these not laptops lying. me not where, lying. where would these fucking board me we don't know <laughs> <laughs> you bullshit so uh lebron had a week to figure out a statement to make on the nba china situation he really didn't he had a whole week to he put didn't have that to together. Say shit. No, 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 no. I'm not saying he had to say oh, shit. Yeah, 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 he yeah. had a week to decide if he wanted to say shit. And then if he was going to say shit, he had a week to cultivate the perfect response well, to this Chinese well, situation. Well, let's give him a backstory for people who don't know. Okay, sure. Uh, Daryl Morey, GM of the Houston Rockets. Yes. Right. Um, he put out a pro Hong Kong he, tweet. He tweeted a picture. Yes. It said, "Stand for freedom." Support Hong Kong. It's really not that crazy. Stand for freedom. Support Hong Kong. Now, was he an idiot for doing this? Yes. Well, hold on. Let's. Dun, 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 dun. Chris, come in. <laughs> hold on. Give me the shit. I just want Chris to tell us why Hong Kong and China are beefing. He don't know. In thirty seconds or less. From Taiwan. Just tell us why Hong Kong and China are beefing. Because mm -hmm. I know nothing about this shit. Right. Hong Kong uh, was a territory of Britain up until about 15 years ago. And Britain signed a 99-year lease to control the territory of Hong Kong. And it was administrated by Britain. It was basically run under Western-style rules. And people had something close to a Western-style lifestyle with courts and press and all the freedoms that we're used to. So a little more freedom than China. A lot more freedom. A lot more freedom. China's one of the most repressive uh, you know, regimes in the world. And that's kind of at the core of what the issue is. Um, and now China, when Hong Kong was returned to China, China said that they would continue to let Hong Kong operate under the rules and systems and expectations that they had become no, used no, to. No, no, no. <laughs> However, now they're starting to tighten the noose a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. And that's what set off these riots. That the, the, the thing that set off the riots was they said that they were going to, if you were convicted of a crime. Finish him. Sorry. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> if you're convicted of a crime in Hong I'm just Kong, the different. We got a newborn, but keep going, Chris. Instead of being tried, oh, Chris, Chris, information. Oh, Chris, Chris. don't want the more. <laughs> 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 Tell us, Chris. Tell us. Anyway, I yeah, thought yeah. you didn't like this shit. <laughs> I, 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 I hate it. <laughs> right, right. I fucking hate it. So now the idea is that you, if you were convicted of a crime in Hong Kong, instead of being tried in Hong Kong, they could extradite you back to mainland China and you would be tried there. And in mainland China, there's basically no rules. You're completely at the mercy of the Communist Party. So Whatever. worse than like a Commonwealth state in America. Oh, yeah, totally. Out of, it's, there's no true legal due process. Everything's bribes. Everything's controlled by the you Communist could, Party. You can steal a pencil a and get 100 years in jail if they want to give it, it to you. If, let's say you didn't steal the pencil. Let's say you bought it. They're like, you stole it. You can disappear tomorrow in China. So in Hong Kong, you get accused of a crime. They're like, well, we'd like to try you for that a crime you're accused uh, for in China. And they're right. like, well, shit, I don't want to go over there because... You just take me out. Yeah. So they're fighting to not have that happen, which is completely reasonable. And that's where this whole thing kind of started. And it's not just Hong Kong. You got to understand that it's Tibet mm -hmm. where they're, uh, 
you know, basically taking over the country and bringing all the people into the Chinese system against their will. It's also, there's a huge ethnic minority. I don't huge. know. Huge. Uyghurs? How do you pronounce it? Uyghurs. Uyghurs. Is that like the niggers of China? Uh, In a way. You said okay. it. They're, but. They're, it. That's how they treat them, essentially. It, I mean, they're what basically they are, they're, setting they're up. They're the Muslims. Yeah. They're Chinese Muslims. Mm-hmm. So they look Mus- they look Chinese, but they practice it, you know, Islam. They have mosques. They're tearing the roofs off of mosques out there. They're setting up what they're could be considered camps. Yeah, or concentration camps, yeah. depending on who you ask. So China, the China's horrible. It's There's a terrible no question, place. But we've always known it was horrible. Right. So when this, this guy, Daryl Morey, puts out the pro Hong Kong tweet, he's not wrong. He's no, 100% it's thousand percent right. right. And okay. it was the most innocuous shit you could say. Yeah. I mean, who, who could pass? That's why, to me, LeBron's statement was really disappointing. What you well, got to read his statement. We, we hold have on, a bite. Hold on, hold we on. have a bite. We don't even need the statement. Yo, yeah. we, we really get Hold on. Stuff stuff hold up. No, tell me you got the sound bite right there. Hey, wait for it. It's a work in progress. I try to do things to make my family proud, make my fans proud every time I step out of the house. So. And that's what for me. That's what it is. LeBron, do you get where the criticism comes from? Like as complex as the issue is, I think. Again. I was trying to ask, do you, do you get where the criticism comes from? Like as complex as the issue might be, I think generally it's talking about freedom of speech and human rights issues. Where do you? How do you kind of process this? this sort of um, I don't know. I mean, it's obviously it's a. I mean, it's a tough situation that we're all in right now um, as an association. That's us as athletes, owners, GMs, whatever, so so forth. Um, and I think, you know, when an issue comes up, if you feel passionate about it or you feel like um, it's something you want to talk about, then, then so be it. Um, I also don't think that um, every issue should be everybody's problem as well. You know, so, you know, when things come up, there's there's multiple things that, that we haven't talked about that happen in our own, in our own country that we don't bring up. You know, there's things that happen in my own community that, you know, trying to help my kids graduate uh, high school and go off to college is, you know, what's been my main concern over the last couple of years, you know, in my school. Um, you know, trying to make sure that the inner city kids that grow up in my hometown can have a brighter future and look at me as an inspiration to get out of the, you know, the hell hold of, of, of the inner city, you know, and we don't talk about those stories enough, um, but we tend to... You know, want to talk about so many other things as well. So there's issues all over the world, um, and, and we, I think the, the best thing we can do is, you know, if you feel passionate about it, talk about it. Um, if you're not, um, if you don't have a lot of knowledge about it or you don't quite understand it, I don't think you should talk about it because um, it just puts you in a, in a tough position. So take your own advice. Last question, please. I plan on being here, being the captain of this team, and trying to figure out a way how we can win a championship. That's that's my main goal right now. Um, I feel this like I talked about it yesterday. Uh, this is a new I tweeted out a statement. couple of responses to people not understanding, you know, my knowledge of what it came from from my brain and, and, and for me learning from the situation. I'm talking about it now, and uh, I probably won't this talk about it again. Yeah, well, I, I, I was thinking about the statement that said I don't want to get into a word or sentence right, feud bite. with Daryl Morey. All right. Well, we can put it in later, but basically he said, I don't want to get into a word of sentence for you with Daryl Morey. So let's put some context real quick. Okay. So that statement is a, I made a boo-boo yesterday. So that was the cleanup. Me, this is the cleanup. Yeah. The one this we just played was the cleanup. We played the cleanup. Okay. The initial statement is the one Charlotte's about to read. Yes. I don't want to get into a word or sentence for you with Daryl Morey, but I believe he wasn't educated on the situation at hand and he spoke. And so many people could have been harmed, not only financially, but physically, emotionally, spiritually. So just be careful what we tweet and what we say and what we do. Even though, yes, we do have freedom of speech, but there can be a lot of negative that comes with that too. That's just my belief. I don't know. That's my belief. That's all all I can say. I believe he was either misinformed or not really educated on the situation. And if he was, then so be it. But I have no idea. That's just my belief that when you say things or do things and you know that people can be affected by it and the families and the individuals and everyone that can be affected by it, sometimes things can be changed. And also sometimes social media is not always the proper way to go about things as well. But that's just my belief. Now, I saw somebody also tweet out yesterday. I don't know if this is true, but I haven't heard it anywhere. They asked LeBron to say something about China and he was like, I- I'm not a politician or something to that effect. I don't know if that's true. I thought you're more than an athlete. He is more than an athlete, but you know what he is? Mm. He's a corporate, he's a compassionate capitalist. Right? There we go. He's a compassionate, so when you're, you can be more than an athlete and part of that more is being a compassionate capitalist. Now, what is a compassionate capitalist? A compassionate capitalist is somebody that cares about the issues of 
people, right? But you don't have the same compassion for all oh, people. people. And by the way, that's fine. Bro, that's know, perfectly a okay. Listen, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, this is we were talking on the Flagrant Two Patreon episode about this exact thing. And when I criticized his initial statement, the one you just read, mm-hmm. I said I wish he said what his follow up was. That's all I wanted anybody to well, say. You, I, I, I don't remember the whole thing, but he said something to the effect of, "Yo, I care about my community. And I care fine. about that. You don't got to care about anything else. Listen, you actually don't even have to care about your community. But the fact that you're doing that is great. You don't have to solve every problem in the world. That's a hundred percent okay. I just want someone out here. I just want people who aren't being hypocritical and being honest, being selective with their outrage. Somebody asked it's me okay yesterday. It's okay to be selective with it. Yes. Somebody asked me yesterday. Somebody said, "Do you care?" If people in Hong Kong are oppressed, and I said yes, I care about anybody being oppressed. I think if, if I want them to be liberated, but that's that. I care less. No, I'm not gonna say I care less. I just don't know what what am I what am I gonna do? That's all I can say. Yeah, of course I care about liberation, but yeah. like LeBron said, we got things going on in our own backyards yeah. right here. No disrespect to them. Yeah, but Dick Gregory used to say something all the time. He's just like Dick Gregory used to say, "Stay out them white folks' business." So I'm like, stay out them Asian folks business. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know why LeBron can't stay out those Asian folks business? Because he makes so much money in China. That's because really all this shit boils down to. That Asian shit is about his money. Business. Yeah. LeBron's business is basketball. That's him, it. his son, Rich Paul and uh, Clutch Sports Management. Yes. They sell sneakers over there. They got Space Jam 2 coming out. If that shit don't sell in motherfucking China, that shit probably won't hit big box office numbers. 100%. All he cares about in that situation, when it comes to that, his compassion is for yeah. his bag. That's that's, that's why it. that's why I liked what he said with the follow up because the initial thing the biggest problem I had with the initial thing was when he said I don't think that Daryl Morey uh, should talk about this issue he was ignorant or uninformed right misinformed Misinf- he was misinformed or whatever right that was my biggest issue because you're out here saying that you should speak on your issues mm-hmm. but you're telling someone not to speak on an issue that it could affect you. So that's where the hypocrisy comes from. I don't care if he only cares about the inner city community. I think that's awesome. Great. You don't have to care about everybody. But don't tell other people what injustices they should care about based on your dollar. And by the way, not only your dollar, your knowledge of a situation. Because I'm not dissing. I don't don't know what LeBron knows, but I guarantee you he, he does not know about the Hong Kong Chinese conflict the way he knows about what's happening with police Mm -hmm. and unarmed black men in this country. That's it. And and when he uses the term misinformed, that's very critical because that's not something he would naturally say. That's straight up Chinese propaganda from the Chinese government. That's the term that they focused in on to try to attack more. See, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. That's it's it's a very specific phrase that they're using. Why that? Why that? Why that? Why that term? Uh, it's kind of like a, a you nuanced. don't know the real story. Right. That's what it implies. It right. implies, hey, you think China we're the bad guys trying to shut down Hong Kong and, and take away their liberties? No, you're misinformed. This we're is... not going to tell you how you're misinformed, but you're misinformed. Right. I mean, like I've been tweeting about it a bit, and there are these like Asian They'll bots. Come at you quick. These Chinese bots yeah. are always responding, going, "Oh, why are you okay with looters and rioters destroying property and this that the other?" I was like, "Oh, you are going at." specific tweets with specific there's a lot of chinese nationalism at play right now too where the mainland chinese are getting their backs up against the wall and fighting back against anyone who criticizes china but i think there's also something going on where everyone says this is so confusing this is an asian problem we don't understand it's not that confusing it's pretty fucking simple yeah but what are we supposed to do well, you cannot not carry. Give a fuck. You can Man, stop no. giving a fuck about these motherfuckers. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 Yo, I don't, let wait, me ask you a question, Charlemagne the God. You yeah. think when a black guy gets killed by the police, you think the people in Hong Kong give a flying I, fuck? I I know they don't. And actually, I saw one of the guys from Hong Kong. I, I, I read the statement yesterday. He gave like he. If he was white and said what he said, they would say he was doing all lives matter. Because he actually said LeBron cares about Black Lives Matter. Well, Hong Kong lives matter too. Yeah, right. this is a guy from Hong Kong. That's literally like all lives matter. Yo, so if he was a white yo. guy in America, you'd be telling him to shut the fuck up. And I'm not telling the guys in Hong Kong to shut the fuck up. I just no, don't know. Keep talking. But it's the same energy. Yo, what what do we what do we what do uh, Chris's Chris's, uh, I don't know, demographic or whatever, your people with your ideology always say, why is America interfering with other countries' business? Why are we getting involved in these foreign wars? Why are we getting involved in these foreign problems, right? Right. And then all of a sudden we're like, 
And we mind them our business. It's, well, how dare you not care about the liberties of the world? When we go into these countries and we give them, quote unquote, freedom and kill millions of people to give them freedom, we the assholes. When yeah, we yeah. don't, we the assholes. Yeah. That's why no one gives a fuck. The same shit with Trump right now. Trump pulls out of Syria and then all these motherfuckers who are anti-war all of a sudden are going, well, how could you do this yeah. to the Kurds? You don't even know what the fuck a Kurd is. A Kurd is a thing of cheese to you. You have no clue what a fucking Kurd is. Yeah. So the fact, that, the fact that we hop on our moral high ground about this shit is complete bullshit. You are completely allowed to not give a flying fuck about people in Hong Kong, just like they don't give a flying, flying fuck, fuck about, about you. you. Listen, and by the way, another thing with uh, with LeBron that I found um, very interesting. Um, the NBA, right? He didn't have to say anything. Like he didn't. Le- LeBron literally had to say nothing on this subject. Like there was nothing to be said. Nobody was dying. I didn't even. I still don't even really know what was going on. I saw the Daryl Morey tweet. I didn't know China went into a fucking frenzy and started pulling shit and all that. I had no idea. So why did he feel like he needed to say no. something? I will. And go, I don't go, like. Go, the, go, go, I don't go, like go, the fact go. that people are calling him fake though. Because I don't think he's fake. I just think he didn't realize he didn't give a fuck. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, he didn't realize in until now because he wasn't forced to deal with it. Yes. He, yes. He, 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 he's, he's, he's a compassionate capitalist, right? Meaning yeah. that he's a black young, he's a young black man from the inner city of Cleveland, right? So he has a specific attachment to certain things that happen in this country, right? Whether well, it's police killing unarmed black and brown people, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. He, he, of course, yeah, you can ride for Kaepernick, you see the injustice that's happening over there. Mm-hmm. He, he, he called Donald Trump a bum. Like, that's, to be honest, that's all low hanging fruit, mm-hmm. especially for somebody six foot ten. Now, you know what I'm saying? Like it's easy to grasp at those. But now, when it comes to, oh, you know that is injustice happening all across the world, and it's happening over there in Hong Kong and China too. Like these people are fighting for their liberation just the same way black people in America are fighting for their liberation. Mm-hmm. Not the same way, but you know what I mean. This is, this is different levels of liberation, sure. right? So he jumps out there and he goes. Oh man, you know whatever. Keep it quiet. You know uh, he was misinformed. Whatever, whatever. This and that. He didn't realize until that moment. He didn't give a fuck about other people. Oh no, he realized before that moment because he had a so? whole week. He had a whole week where he realized it, and in that week, he's supposed to come up with the perfect statement, which was the second statement he made, which was really brilliant. why make a statement at no, all. The perfect statement is to say nothing. That's no, not saying. because saying nothing. <laughs> he's is, the only person. No, saying nothing is not the perfect statement because if he says nothing, then Daddy China shut you up. I actually love the second statement because it was basically saying, listen, if you want to talk about shit and that's your thing, go for it. Talk about so it. LeBron what made I care this about shit, is black people in America and their struggle. LeBron made this shit way bigger than it ever would have been. I, I but you the, knew they were going to talk to him because there are these conferences all the time. And then what started to happen is when people would ask questions in the news conferences, there was right. this lady to ask and they were shut down. Now that becomes a news story. When they kick someone out of the NBA games, these preseason games, because they're putting the free Hong Kong uh, posters up in the games, that becomes a story. So you can't avoid it. You got to meet it head on. And he said the ba- best thing. I care about my community. Some people just care about the environment. Yeah, you know these yeah, people yeah. who care about polar bears, but they don't give a fuck about police killing black people? They're yeah. allowed to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? They Motherf- are loud. Motherfuckers care about climate change more than they care about an election security bill. They don't give a fuck about no Russian interference. That's <laughs> like, it. it just is what it is. So so it's like you're allowed to pick and choose your thing. They're like vegans who really care about animals, right? Yes. That's their Corey thing. Corey said that shit five times last night. I was like, shut the is fuck up. Is he still around? Up. Yo, did you see him making out with Rosario Dawson pretending to like it? No way. Did you see you've that never, adorable shit? You've never seen it. You've, you've never seen it. What? You've never seen it. There was apparently a you picture. You made that up. You've never seen it. I thought there was a picture. There no was somebody way. posted a picture. No, you've never seen them together. Somebody show me. Prove me wrong. Apparently there's a picture where you've they're making out on the red carpet. You've never seen them together. But you didn't see it? Nobody like saw that. And then he like turns around kind of gags a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All he kept saying last night was, I don't like meat. I don't like meat. Who said that? Cory Booker. Lies. Thou that protest. <laughs> <laughs> thou that protest. Thy, that, what is too it? Much. Thou that thou protest. protest. Too much. Thou that protest. Too much. Thou Corey. protest. Too right. much. <laughs> Corey, let's be honest, dude. Come on now, Corey. Get the fuck out of here, dude. All I'm simply saying yeah. is, though, LeBron didn't have to say shit. And real talk. This is really a prime example of compassionate capitalism. Like yes. I'm a stern believer. What's I don't think compassionate about it though. What capitalism? No, he, I mean well, selective what he compassion did. is what he's saying. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's selectively compa- compassionate about yeah. his issues. Right. He's compassionate about his issues, and by the way, he's just compa- like you, no, Chris. No, no, not, 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 not. LeBron's compassionate about his money in China, Chris. Yeah, look, I, I have, I have a stake matter. in this game. 
You know, like yeah. what happens here impacts me directly. So I, I care about it. I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah, and, you know, that, but, and that's what I told Angela Rye yesterday. Yeah. I'm like, yo, we got to stop. That's the only reason why you care. That's You're being it. just as selfish that's as LeBron. It. Like that's you it. care about your little vacations to Taiwan every year. You want to make sure you, you can care do about that your direct care. interest. Exactly. LeBron what he direct cares interest about is money in China. Is money in China. That's it. Now, 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 here's the thing. I'm OK with that. But Perfectly just admit fine. that that's you. Don't front like you actually give a fuck. Do you know what I'm saying? That's all I care yeah. about. Is I'm, I'm, I'm out here saying I'm a hypocrite. I'm out here saying you're not a hypocrite, though. Not, meaning, uh, when I say hypocrite, I mean like I can care more about certain issues than others. Like I can care more about freedom in America than I care about freedom in China. In other words, right? Well, you know when people use that Martin Luther King Jr. quote and they be like an injustice anywhere. Yeah, well, he, he threat tweeted to justice that. Everywhere. LeBron that tweeted up. that shit. Yeah, yeah but, but by, LeBron by, was talking about America. Bro. Exactly. <laughs> Martin Luther King Jr. wasn't. But LeBron was talking about America. Yeah, we, you know. Martin Luther King Jr. was talking about Vietnam. He was talking about South Africa. He was yeah. talking about different injustices all across the world. You LeBron gotta, was talk, LeBron might have been talking about Cleveland, bro. I see. <laughs> bro, you got you to gotta make your bed first. You know what I mean? Like, you can't invite nobody over unless your bed is made and, the, you know, the dinner is set and the yeah. plates are put out, right? But I think there was another level to it with him, too, because if you really read his comments... I think he was upset that a white executive in the NBA did something that's potentially going to cost the NBA billions, depending on how it plays out. Maybe yeah, more. He was, he was saying and something that like that guy didn't get fined. He didn't get fired. And I think the thing, I think the reason you want him to get fined or fired. Yeah. I Why? Think, no, 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 no. This, this is, is, this is good. Why? All right, because uh, this is what I'm Why inferring get fi- from what he said. Yeah. Why should you get fined or fired? What he, he said that though. What he said was, he said if a we know if a fired. player had done something that yeah. had such a, impact on the league right. at this level financially yeah. yes you know there would be ramifications pause okay pause do they talk about trump every single day no, i don't agree with him no no no. i'm yeah, just I'm saying telling what he said. that's what adam silver yeah. said back because like all of you guys shit on trump and conservatives every single right. day not a single one of you have been fined for that you have freedom of speech in america what this is another problem i have with what lebron did he's basically saying that you should be able to silence certain people if it affects the bag right. and the reality is buddy this is america right. so you can say whatever the fuck you want and right. that's part of it and if we get into a situation where you can't say anything that affects the bag effectively you can't say anything right and i'm not a part of that shit oh by the way i can't support that when at you all. affect the bag is when you do get fired that's why these people boycott corporations. Well, Maury's affecting the bag. There's no doubt about that. This right. has affected oh, the bag. Oh, yes, he has. In a very, very yes, significant way. He probably way. cost a billion dollars. He probably Minimum. cost the NBA a billion dollars. Bro, now, he probably fu- And by the way, he plays for the Rockets. Who has a bigger Asian fan base than the, the Rockets? Team. He the probably biggest. fucked their attendance up crazy. But you cannot find someone for affecting the bag. You can find someone. For, for example, you don't go to jail if you're working at a business and you fuck up and the business loses money. You don't go to jail. You actually fucked up. You made a right. mistake or you did something that was completely OK. For example, Elon Musk goes on Joe Rogan's podcast, smokes some weed and the stock dips, you know, five percent and they lose, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever. That's not illegal. That's right. not an illegal thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You're allowed to do that. You're allowed to do whatever you want. This is America. We have freedom of speech. You better fucking like it. The fact that LeBron is out here going, we need to find him. We need to get him fired. For what? For saying that motherfuckers shouldn't be put in concentration camps? For saying that motherfuckers shouldn't be exterminated because they're religion? You know who he sounded like? Say it. Donald Trump. There we go. Donald Trump was like, yo, you take a fucking knee, should be fired. You don't stand for the anthem, should be fired. So so this is my perfect this is my perfect situation. Where is look how easy it is to become the person you hate when your interests are affected. Yeah, oh, yeah. And I'm, that's I'm, what I want to take yeah. away. I'm reading Ted that, Cruz's that's tweets what I want and saying, to Yeah, this guy's making a be. lot of sense. I want the takeaway yeah. from this to be is that you can't understand someone's actions. Until you're in that position, like for example, these these people who make tons of money that don't want to pay no taxes, you never had the luxury to choose how much you pay in taxes to decide that you don't want to pay that much. Jason, I had to pay my taxes yesterday. Shit, you think I wanted to pay them shit? Shit, you think I wanted to pay them goddamn taxes? You think I wouldn't want that Amazon tax break zero dollars? <laughs> Everybody in this fucking room would. If you really, if you really, if you ever had to pay taxes, Chris. I'm, I'll pay it all, man. Man, shut up. Stop it. That's, see, that's the thing that, that bothers me is that you can't live by your own principles. 
I'm okay. No, I've always said I'm okay paying a slightly higher tax rate. I yeah. would only pay him if I if I knew exactly where the money was You're going never gonna know exactly and who it was impacting. Go. If I knew it was actually impacting people and it was it was it was helping the poor and disenfranchised and it was helping homeless veterans, it was helping kids through school, whatever the fuck it was. If I knew it was doing that, free health care, I'm all but for. But you it. have to take that leap of faith because there's no other alternative. Man, because trickle down doesn't work. We know I've that. been alive 41 years old. 41 years. I don't know who the fuck Fike is. I still think it's the goddamn <laughs> basketball soccer league. The football league. <laughs> what the fuck is that? FIFA. 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 <laughs> exactly. Why is this shit on my check all the time? I don't, who, I don't know what the fuck that shit is or yeah. where that money goes. You got to chalk it up to the game. It is one of those things. But this is a perfect example of just hypocrisy exposed. And it's great to see what happens when you check people's pockets. And now, if we know a guy like LeBron James is willing to put up with concentration camps, internment camps, the harvesting of organs, oh, yeah. and the stripping of rights... Of an entire country of people, two iPhones. billion of them, right? iPhones, all that shit, just so he can make some money. Don't be surprised when a corporation is willing to fuck up the environment so they can make some money. Because if you're okay with people dying so you could make your sneakers, you should be okay. You should understand when ExxonMobil is okay with a bunch of oil being spilled I'm, in the I'm, Gulf I'm, I'm so they can make money. I'm telling you right now, Andrew, I agree with you 100%, and I don't think LeBron knew, knows any of that. I think LeBron mm. is being downloaded on all of that now. I think LeBron's mindset was simple. Ah. This motherfucker fucking up the bag in China. Interesting. We got to go over here and sell shoes. You know, 16% of all Nike revenue in 2018 came from fucking China. 17% of NBA revenue. This yeah. guy's got a billion dollar motherfucking lifetime deal. He's got a son coming that's going to end up doing a deal with Nike. 100%. He's got a movie coming out. This motherfucker got a, a sports agency. They got to go over there and play ball. He yep. wants to own a team one day. I'm sure. Like, I guarantee you all he was thinking about is why are you fucking up the money in China? And I guarantee you LeBron didn't LeBron's been to China 17 times. Mm -hmm. Foreign nationals don't get treated like the citizens do. So he he probably has no idea they have no freedom. My my one thing that I would say is I've always thought LeBron was one of the more intelligent people in entertainment sports and one of the more savvy people in entertainment sports. So I I never assume ignorance with people that smart. That's not, but that's not ignorance. That's just not knowing. Like you don't, nobody knows ignorance everything. Ignorance is not knowing. Meaning, like yeah. you're just ignorant to not an ignorant person, but ignorant to what's happening, what's happening? in China. Yeah, yeah. But I, I can't assume that with a guy who I put on a pedestal with with his intellect and right. like his his savvy and his marketing genius. Like I'm on record saying LeBron is is changing the game in terms of how athletes market themselves. Sure. And it's like for me, I can't call you that smart and then call you dumb at the same I time. I had a conversation with somebody yesterday, one of my homegirls. And we was talking about leaving America if shit gets crazy. Where you gonna go? She said China. This girl crazy. Listen to me. I'm gonna tell you what she said. She said the buildings are modern. No. Uh, yo, what else yo, did she say? Yo, she, people lost their goddamn mind. You ain't going nowhere. You ain't going to Canada. You ain't going nowhere. You, you realize that if you leave America, and I do not care what you, it could be, a, you're a black man, you're an Asian woman, it don't matter where it is. Your life ain't going to get better anywhere else. Depends what you, it depends what you like, though. Do you like, all right, if you like cold eight months out of the year, yeah. You I could, could be that. in Anguilla. I could, live, I could retire in Anguilla. Until bro. you have a health issue. And there's no... And then you got hospitals and, and all that. They, they ain't the same. Americans Miami. go there for med school. The ones who can't get into anywhere else. No, that's not true. Yeah. Americans go there for med school. The second anybody with money in any of the Caribbean islands, they Dwayne fly backed me up. up. They fly to New York or Miami. Am I wrong? Hey, what's wrong with that? My point is, when you, to the you can go down there and the Wi-Fi is going to be out for two months. You're going to be like, fuck this shit. Who gives a shit? That's what you say, but you're going to get bored. I go there to turn my phone off. I know, but you're going to want to turn your phone off for 40 years? I'm a group chat, y'all. You, I'm going to be have just Wi-Fi. like Duval saying, you're gonna be, what the fuck y'all fake can about today? But Duval fly back. Yes, he does, because he got to get that money to keep going back. There we go. <laughs> but he got a house there. Listen, I listen. I could, I could do it, bro. I'm being honest. I with think you. you think you can, but if you're there for 40 years, listen. The island life is not easy. Like, talk to folks who have moved from America to like the Bahamas or these types of places. They love it, dude. They love it for a little, but there are no. They it, love there it. There are difficulties. I've spoken to people. Uh, I've, me too. And they and say they, it's totally fine. They don't miss nothing. They're looking at you like, why are you still in America? Yeah. Yo, listen. <laughs> like, so like, yo, I met, yo, when I was there over the summer, met a woman. She used to live in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. She was living in Brooklyn for like um, her whole life. She's been living in, she, in she, her grandfather's somebody had a place in Angola. She's been living in Angola for like the last four or five years. I was like, yo, do you miss it? She was like, fuck no. She's like, she did say, she's like, come on, she's like, I go to I do my doctor visits and I bring my ass right back. Living the life, man. But she older though. It just depends what your interest is. So you still out here slinging dick. 
No, I got a girl, bro. Oh, my bad. But I do be slinging it. I do be slinging it, though. I do be slinging it, bro. You know. See, I ain't slinging dick no more. I'm happy. I, I yeah, can't wait but to be you, in You're also competitive. You're in the mix. You want to, you know, like, you have to kind of be prepared to disconnect all the way if you're going to be in the I don't think thing. you could disconnect all the yeah. way. I think you like being part of it. Yeah. I think even when you're old, you're going to like being part of it. It depends. If I can still, if I can still affect change. Meaning but you like. Can't. Meaning, like, if I can still empower people, um, things like that, yes. But who's empowering you from Anguilla right now? The people. No, but like, what? Where, where is the Charlemagne, the God that is there? You're going to be slightly disconnected. Listen, there's no doubt you could empower the people of Anguilla and those surrounding islands and like the culture there. Mm-hmm. But if you want to empower the people within the place that you're in, you got to be there, bro. You got to be on the streets. You got to be touching the people. I used to think that, but I think social media changed that, man. A little bit. A little bit, but then at the same time, it's like, yo, why are you telling us what to do? You on an island in Anguilla, like living your That's best That's why you should listen to me. Eating fresh grouper. You should listen to me because I retired <laughs> and I'm living in this multi-million dollar house in Anguilla. I don't know. I just, I, I don't want this to seem like we're shitting on Anguilla. Like clearly you love it and it's an amazing place. I think I could live in Africa too. What part? Ghana, Lagos. No, maybe not Lagos. I like Lagos. I like Nigeria though. Ghana, Ghana and Johannesburg. Right. I think I could live in those places. Bet. You got it. I do. That's you got that. <laughs> He's like, yo, yeah, you on your yo, yo, top? Yo, I'm you got visit. that. You got that. I'm, I'm, I'm a visit. visit. House. Yo, you know let me know. Give me yeah, your address. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna pop in on Thanksgiving. Word. Word. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. We traveled. We traveled the world, bro. Like, is we were in Australia, right? Australia is the most similar place I've ever been to to America culturally. It is America exactly mm-hmm. the same. It's close as London. Co- Ten times closer. Closer than Canada. You could live in London. No, no, it's not that I couldn't. I oh. like London. They're, 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 listen, we could live in many different places. Right. You know, we're 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 fighting over like which yacht we want to live in. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, we're talking yeah, yeah. about like the best places in the world. Like, yeah, we could easily live and succeed and have so much fun in these places, right? Um, what I think America offers you is is diversity, not in terms of race, but in terms of like the place you want to live. Like, if you live in Canada, right, which is a fucking beautiful, beautiful people, beautiful place, right? You're gonna be cold for eight months. You have to be. You have to be cold for eight months. You can travel. No, you can't. In New York, we cold for like not, six. Not everybody. Yeah, but I could live in Miami. I could retire in Miami. I could retire in San Diego. I could retire in Arizona. I could retire in all these places. If you're in Canada, you have to be cold. You have to be. You must be cold. Do you know what I'm saying? Have you seen Drake's house? Say what? Have you seen Drake's house? No, it's covered in snow. That I shit. can't see his house. That's how cold. Drake's house is like 60,000 square feet. It better be inside. No, it's stupid. Like, <laughs> it's unbelievable. No, I I, I believe it. I, I'm saying like if you live in London, right, you have to be in the rain and the fog and it's dark for at 3 eight PM. months. And yeah. it's dark at th- for eight yeah. months. You have to. You must. But it's got to be you other must. It's got to be other creature comforts that make them feel good sure. about the place Tea. that they're in. <laughs> you know, it, I'm yeah. sure there are other things. And don't get me wrong. These places are incredible, right? We're talking about it would be the most amazing thing in the world. For 90% of the world, the most amazing thing would be to live in any of these places. What a gift yeah, that it yeah, is yeah, that yeah, we yeah. could live in all these fucking places. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is you can't deny that America has certain disadvantages, but advantages in terms of lifestyle. Depends we we acknowledge though. that, right? Depends where you we, we speaking from a place of, well, we don't live in Camden, New Jersey. No, we're, I'm talking prosperity. Like, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. we're talking about you and I, that we have disposable income to live anywhere that we want, yes. right? And if I have to be locked in one place, I would like, dude, dude, if someone was like, you can live anywhere in Europe, if we compared Europe to America, boom, it's lit. That means I could spend my summers in fucking London. I could spend my winters in the south of Spain. I could really choose. But America is that. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed myself in Johannesburg, yo. We were sitting outside one time. I was like, oh, this shit feel like L.A. Boom. Straight up. When we was outside Nelson, Square Mall, Nelson, Nelson Mandela Square Mall. Mm-hmm. And we was eating outside. I'm like, yo, this shit feel like L.A. Like, right. that shit was cool as fuck. And then I look at the people that I follow from like Johannesburg and Lagos, like my homegirl Cuppy and my homegirl Bo Nang. Where's they, Cuppy live at? Cuppy lives, Cuppy lives in between London and Lagos. Right. Yeah. She was here a couple weeks ago. But it's like, yo, they balling. Like they doing everything. That, like they got the phantoms. and She's the, also a billionaire, dude. Like a billionaire is a billionaire anywhere. That's what I'm saying. Like right. Bo Nang is like, when you see Bo Nang, Bo Nang is like the, 
I don't want to say Kim Kardashian, but she got like her own reality show. She got her own champagne. She's on the cover of all the magazines in Africa, the GQs and the right. Vogue's and all of that. Like you go to her gram, she's living. Yeah. Like they look, they, I'm like, yo, they look like they're doing better than most people here. Yeah, no, they are because they're billionaires, right? Yeah. Like I, I think the one thing also is that you have to think about is um, your safety. So if you're going to be wealthy, you want to exist within a country where the wealthy are protected. Oh, you mean like a country where you don't have to walk around with security all the time? Right. Oh, I don't. I would know. I don't know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you can decide not talk that shit, and then you'd be all right. But then it would be any fun. No, I'm with I, you. I'm the That's only, a choice. We gotta exercise this freedom of speech thing. No, I'm with you. Michael Bloomberg, billionaire, could ride the subway. Yeah, yeah. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, like yeah, there yeah, are yeah, yeah. there are levels to this shit. Like the Michael Bloomberg of Lagos, Nigeria. Cannot ride the subway. Nah. Right? And the Michael Bloomberg of Johannesburg, South Africa, probably cannot ride the subway. Nah. Right? Yeah. The, Mi- the, the Michael Bloomberg of London can do it. The I Michael don't Bloomberg think Bloomberg of- walking around without no security, bro. Son, we would see him on the subway all the fucking time. Yeah, but what about those guys that look nonchalant just sitting by him in the suits? Y'all, they, they, I don't believe my, I don't believe They're Bloomberg. going to Wall Street, too. Nah, yeah, and they got guns. I don't believe Bloomberg walking around no security. I, re- I don't. I, not in New York. Nah, Maybe. man. Nah, Maybe. man. Maybe not. You I think mean, so, Chris? We used to see the, the Kennedy kid, Kennedy the Jr. Mayor, he had to yeah, have Yeah, you got to. John but Kennedy I, I Jr. Agree. would be rollerblading around the fucking city. Yeah, you city. can be a celeb in New York and L.A. and not have armed security. All the time. who you are. Depends who you are. Well, I, it's and not only what celebs, culture you're from. What you're talking about is in these cities, if you're the son or the nephew, whatever, of a rich you person, get kidnapped, you're absolutely. a fucking target. I agree with you. Go to and, Mexico, it's going to happen. You're going to yeah, get kidnapped. You right. need constant security. And there is a point in time, and I'm sure you've experienced some of this, where it's like, am I free? Am I free if I have to be protected all the time? At, at what cost? You know, like all this shit costs. But you're not worried about your kids. That's the difference. You know what I mean? You're it's not worried about someone snatching your kid by, up at school. You know, like that's I mean, the reason I don't put them on social media, which is smart. You know but, what I'm saying? Yeah. That, but that could just be my own paranoia, my own. But if you were in one of these other countries, there would be an armed guard coming to your Absolutely. kid's school, picking Absolutely. them up, taking them straight home, whatever Absolutely. the case may be. No, Absolutely. Look, we're, great. We're, we're basically talking about like first world problems. Like right. we are so fucking fortunate dude and i understand i'm like a white guy living in 2019 so it's great but we are so lucky to live in the first world and i'm talking about all the different countries in the first world in 2019 like the the i mean it's a reason everybody tries to come here of course but what i'm what i mean is what i mean i mean london i mean manchester i mean birmingham i mean paris i mean madrid i mean barcelona i mean anywhere in the first world in 2019 in the greatest time in history where we have i mean literally do you realize that like most of the country most of the people in the world are like fighting for water they don't have water to drink oh no absolutely right and we in this country take shits into clean water Think about that. <laughs> Think about how fortunate the shit somebody would drink. They would die to drink the water in a toilet. You're just and we it. take a shit into it so that we don't have to clean our shit off of the toilet hey, bowl. By the way, not only do we shit in it, some of us are so blessed that we even spray a little of it, little of it in our ass after Afterwards. we shit. That's how much we're wasting water. We are shooting water, water up privilege. in our butt because we don't want to wipe our own ass. We don't want to use toilet paper to wipe our own ass. And most of the world is like, what is toilet paper? Wow. They don't even know what toilet paper is. They're like, is that what you you used to use leaves for? I was in America and they, they take this white stuff and wrap it around their hand before they wipe their ass. They take clothing and they wrap it around their hand and they wipe their ass. <laughs> we would die shit. for that clothing. You're right. So so would I be perspective, baby. Son, would I be happy living in any of the places that we live? I'd be so fucking lucky to live in any of those places we live. Because the majority of people do not have this level of fucking fortune. So you bro. telling me that China's that trash? Yeah. Really? I mean, look, Shanghai, yeah. Beijing, Sh- Guangzhou, like, I mispronounced that. But, like, those are definitely what you would consider first world cities. The irony is the real city in Asia that you could live in or could have lived in tomorrow, zero transition felt just like America, is Hong Kong. And that actually about to be. And that's cool. why. Well, Tokyo. I mean, Tokyo is its own thing, but Tokyo is a world class city for sure. Yeah, you could okay. live there easily. Uh, that's not the same thing. Is that in? Well, I don't fucking know. That it's Japan. Japan. Okay, yeah, yeah. got you. Got but you, got you got could you. easily live there. I mean, yeah. Taipei so why is why like, like America. Why do you like to go to China so much? Then they don't. They got that wall. Really? Yeah, that's the only thing. 
It's just a tourist attraction. That's what Trump's building here. I'm going to stop acting like that. I know what the fuck's going on in China. You know what I know about China? That everything in America is made in it. Yeah. Everything. Right. That's all you know, I know about Here's China. the thing. And I want to I want to clarify. It's not that like, it's not Chinese culture or people are bad. It's that there is a dictatorship that limits freedom, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because clearly Chinese culture is awesome. That's why they recreate China every time they move to America and, or any other country, and you right? you got those ball players that go to China and act like they love it. Right. Like Stephon Marbury became damn near a billionaire in China. Killing it. Loving it. But there's a limit. I would, I would, if you want to educate yourself, there's a movie, a documentary about a Chinese artist named Ai Weiwei called Never Scared. And it's a documentary about him trying to speak out through his art against the Chinese government. It's one of the most incredible things I've seen. I mean, when you see what this guy is really up against and how they come after him, it's on, you know, a very visceral level you can really get a sense of what it would be like to have an opinion in china yeah. that goes against the government's it's heavy and heavy yo, stuff yo, this sounds fucked up but here's some wild shit right country of two billion people right yeah you're a government think about america we got 350 million people we can barely hold it to, to fucking gather very right? important we point have, you're about to bring up here yeah sure so we have we have 350 million people. We are being torn apart at the seams, right? Democrat, Republican, everybody's being, because we have options of what to be and what to believe in. Mm. So the Chinese have 2 billion people and they're looking at all these different democracies in the world and they're like, oh, what eventually happens? You have two different tribes and they tear each other apart and then it happens, you go into civil war and there's all this unrest. This is really up. fucked up. So what are we going to do? We are going to have one Chinese party, one identity of what it is to be Chinese, and anybody that doesn't go along with that, he got to go. And we're going to remove any other influencing factors. You know, there, you know there's no religion, right? That's the reason why they're knocking out the the mosques and shit. They're like, we don't want anything that could sway your idea of what it is to be. You know, from so the crazy, Chinese that'll way. never work though. Well, no, but here, so my father in law is a professor of Asian studies, and I was asking him just that question, like, why do they come down so hard? Why is there are no room for any sort of gray area with them. And he said, basically, the Communist Party understands that China is not supposed to exist as one. It's too many people. Bro. It's really supposed if you look at it historically, it's really supposed to be 10 or 12 smaller countries within what we today see. You're looking at the Soviet, yeah, yeah, look at makes, the Soviet Union, sense. right? Like yeah. if you go to Russia and you go to these places, there are all these different ethnic groups that are there. Not everybody's yeah. a blonde, blue eyed Russian. There's right. Asian one looking people. Etc. One person could never be in control of two billion people. It, effectively. It, exactly. But what, what you do, you take away the fact that there are 12 different states right. by removing the identity of each state. So when they see a place like Hong Kong, which is supposed to be part of China, but it has its own identity, that's a threat. That's a threat. Because you then stomp Beijing that out. starts going, yo, why can't we be Beijing about it? Like the whole idea of America, which is, hey, we're not actually America. We're the United States. Think about that. The yeah, states yeah, yeah. are even in our name. South Carolina has got it all, its own shit. Absolutely. And New York's got its own shit. Yeah. And we got our own fucking rules. The fact that we've been able to keep this together for three for 300 years it's a but that's why, it's a miracle. The reason you've been able to keep it together is because you have all of these different people that have their own, their own identities. And we and let not, them. And, and not only right, that, you have it. all of these different democracies throughout America who can all contribute to the greater good of America. Now the problem is you got a motherfucker in there who don't want to listen to nobody except himself. And that's going to ultimately be the ultimate demise of fucking and that's America. Why I, and that's why uh, 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 a threat to the establishment or democracy, right? Like what you're saying about Trump limiting democracy— is a huge threat to American identity. Yes. Right? Like if people That's actually- That's not what we're about. Exactly. If people actually realize that like, and I and you've been trying to talk about it a lot here and you've been bringing up fascism and these types of things, like, it's not necessarily like, oh my God, we're going to become Nazis again. It's not really about that. It's what, the reason why we've been able to keep this country together is people really believe that they can do their own thing Absolutely. and they can have their own identity. Absolutely. And once you start stripping that from them, what is the point? What is what is the fucking if I can't be myself, why am I in America? Why are you in America? Why did my parents? It's the come whole here? point of being in America because I can be truly my fucking self. And that's any president point. that tries to take that, he got to go. I mean, that's what I was saying about China. Like eventually, it's just a natural order of things for people to rebel. Mm. It's not it's even, going to happen. A hundred years ago, there was no China. You got to understand that. What was it? It was a bunch of warlords and one guy controlled this area and another guy controlled this area. I mean, China was in chaos. Americans don't understand that. They think that China has been this country that's been running smoothly for the last 2000 years. And it's no, 
1919, it was chaos. They were warlords. They were getting invaded by the Japanese, by the British, the Americans. Like, that's a country that historically has really always been on the edge of falling apart. So, you know, we look at it now and say, well, you know, why are they doing those things? Because they know what's around the corner if they don't stop this stuff out. You know what it is? You've worked in small radio. Mm Mm-hmm. And you've worked in big corporate, Mm -hmm. billion dollar corporation radio. Mm -hmm. The rules on big corporate, big billion dollar corporate radio, right? The office rules are much more strict. The office politics, how you can talk to people, all the people that are listening, what you can say. All this is way more strict because that's the only way that you can keep Order. Intact in order yeah. in a massive company with thousands of employees. That's that's you're when absolutely it's four right. People, when, you, when it's me and Alex and Mark on the road, we just talking shit to each you, other. You, we hanging out. Ain't no rules. Except the market's showing that you can do it that way. Everything right. that y'all are explaining for the time is, being, yeah, is, yeah, is the reason why certain people want to shut down big tech. So you keep going. That's the, I mean that's just what it is. It's the re- that's why every certain people want to shut down Facebook and it's Twitter and all that shit like that because they can't control all of these people that seem to i don't want to it, it, they seem to have one train of thought mm-hmm. you understand what i'm saying yep I, I, I and think it's too much power it's too much power it's too much power for you to control ideas yeah right like yeah, 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 let's yeah. say you're mark zuckerberg and you feel one way about the world yeah. that's cool but you happen to have too much influence to feel one way about the world, it's like, and you can shut up who you want to shut up. You can. So now you and only amplify have who you want to amplify. Boom, right? So it's like, it's it, people always make this thing about like, um, you know, when these companies like Walmart and shit, like the, where where they put all this pressure on workers, right? Where they're like, well, we can pay them whatever we want, right? And I'm a private business, so I should be able to pay people however much I want to pay them. It's like, yeah, you should be able to do that, but. What you're doing is leveraging all the buying power that you have or the paying power that you have to pay them less, right? And that's cool. You could do that. But then when people unionize and they leverage their working power to get paid more, don't shut them down because they're doing the exact opposite thing of you. You trying to pay them less and using all your paying power? Mm -hmm. Okay, guess what? They're going to band all their money together and say, we need a little bit more. If you shut them down, you're being a hypocrite. Mm. We'll let you pay whatever you want. But hey- we gonna get paid whatever we want as well. Let's pay some bills because I want to come back and I want to talk about um, what Senator Harris said last night to Elizabeth Warren because you know she wants she wants Twitter to shut Donald Trump's Twitter account down. I yeah. Let's, let's pay some bills and then we'll come back to that. Let's talk about better help. God damn it. Uh, if there is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp Online Counseling can help, okay? BetterHelp offers licensed professional counselors who are specialized in issues such as depression, anxiety, relationships, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, self-esteem, and more. Connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment and get help at your own time and at your own pace. Anything you share is confidential, and it's so convenient. You can schedule a secure video or phone session as well as chat and text with your therapist. If for some reason you are not happy with your counselor, though, you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Our listeners even get 10% off your first month with the discount code IDIOTS. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash idiots and simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash idiots. Should do the next, do the next one, show. Absolutely, guys. Let me tell you what I'm wearing right now. Underwear by my man, Mack Weldon, okay? Mack Weldon is a premium men's essentials brand that believes in smart design and premium fabrics. That's a really fancy way to say they're fucking comfortable, okay? They're comfortable. They don't stretch out in the legs like these shitty underwear companies. You wear them for two hours and all of a sudden they're all waffled. They control your junk in a nice, comfortable, breathable material that is by far... My favorite type of underwear to wear, but it's not only underwear. They got all the essentials, all the basics, okay? You need shirts, you need socks, all the basics that you need, they got for you. Hoodies, sweatpants, you want to lounge, they're ready. They got your back. They have the line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial. Basically, they get rid of that odor and they don't store it there. So your underwear doesn't fucking stink all day. They want you to be comfortable. So if you don't like your first pair of underwear, you can keep it and they will still refund you. Did you just hear what I said? You can order some underwear. If you don't like them, 
They will pay you back for the underwear and you get to keep them. If that's not reason enough to just get a free pair of underwear, then I don't know what the hell is. Mac Weldon, all right? Sports, you got to do it. You got to do it, okay? You have to go do there. If you play in any sports, you make sure it happens. You're going to sweat. You're going to love this underwear. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com and enter the promo code Brilliant idiots. That's MacWeldon.com. Promo code Brilliant idiots for twenty percent off your first order. Um, guys, we don't know where this is going to be in the episode, but I'm sitting down here with um, international fucking superstar. Oh, wow, international fucking superstar. Hug first time he meets you. Arena sellout. Filipino sensation. Hawaiian sensation? Jesus Christ. Pretty much all island Asian sensation. And white. White sensation. White half. sensation. Yeah. Can't forget my dad. I thought you were half black. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah no, no, is your wife black? Yeah. No. Where did I get this from? Um, it's the fucking sneakers. Yeah, it's the sneakers, man. <laughs> your sneaker fucking, game, my sneaker is, so game is, is very black. <laughs> <laughs> no, Joe Coy is in the building hey. right now. Um, I love, I love you, man. You know, I think it's amazing watching what's happening with you. It's like you have this weird thing where how it's like you've been successful for too long. <laughs> Where it's like, 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 you know how like you see people build, like yeah. you've been really nice to me and you've, you've been like, Hey man, I've been watching what's going on with you. And, but you're, you're like watching like a build with me. Right. Uh. But it's like, you've been selling out these big fucking venues yeah. for 15 years, 10 uh, years. About t- t- I mean, it, it's always been a cross, but it's a, yeah, about 10, 10, but it's been a cross. It's between clubs and and, and, and theaters, and, and now, like lately, it's been the Hawaii the thing was insane. That was crazy. The that Hawaii was, that was thing fucking crazy. Was insane. Yeah, this was the arena. It was like the it was where the uh, what is it? The University of Hawaii plays. They, it's called the Blazel Arena. Okay, and uh, and we did four of those. <laughs> how many, dude? Yeah. How many Hawaiians are there? Uh, I mean, they were though. If you were on vacation that day, you didn't see any Hawaiians, <laughs> right? Yeah, just a bunch of people from Kansas going, "Where the fuck are the Hawaiians? <laughs> I want poke. <laughs> I want poke, and I want it now. <laughs> I want a pineapple. So, so for the I show, I want an aloha. <laughs> what the fuck, man? They were literally, it literally was the entire, the entire time. And we had an end stage set up. So it wasn't in the round, you you know, where they put it up against the, you know, like a, Ah, they put it at the end instead of in the round. So there was curtains and um, people were sitting behind the curtains. They were there just to listen. It was so, it was so packed. Hold on. You sold tickets behind behind the curtain. Yeah. It was crazy. But we told them, they were like, Hey, if you want to sit behind, you can. And they were like, yeah, brother, let's go. Let's go. (laughs) Shit, yeah, bro. Put open everything, bro. Well, they, it's their seats. I go, yeah. Well, then give us, bro. And they fucking sat behind. Like while we were taping, I would I would peek around the the curtain and wave to them because literally people were sitting behind the. It's insane. Curtain. Yeah, man. Why is it in Hawaii? I don't know what it's not you, a big Filipino population. He, do they think you're Hawaiian? Do you present as Hawaiian? I don't. I don't know. They they gave me. Well, there is a, a big Filipino uh, population there, but I think it's just. I don't know, man. I really don't know what it was. I really don't. It just it that one was the first one to blow up after my special, and when we went, uh, we put the tour on sale. Yeah. It, it literally was the first thing to sell out, like in minutes. Yeah. I remember they were doing like a news report on it. And my, my manager was like, hey, they're talking about you on the news right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, what? I think it's one of those places where it's like, um, it's so isolated from the States that they still have like kind of hive mentality as yeah, people. Yeah. You know, like where know like you certain groups, yeah. th- there's still a group there. There's still like a one people. <laughs> so like if one guy's talking about it, he's telling the uncle That's and the auntie. That's so true. You're 100%. I never even thought of that. Yeah, you're yeah. right, man. It's like the, the word of mouth is real there. 100%. Like you're 100%. Gonna, you're going to come here. And where you're already here and you're going to sell out or you already sold out Radio City, mm. right? And you're going to have 6,000 people there, 12,000, whatever, how many shows you're doing. And there are going to be people in New York that have no fucking clue, clue. that you're even in, in New York. Town. You know what pisses me off? I'll post a video and it's like, uh, yeah. uh, thank you, Atlanta. Yeah. And then people will Yo, go, you were in, in Atlanta? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's a thank you video. 
yeah. That means I was just there. <laughs> so we were talking about this. Uh, uh, ben and I actually were talking about this the other day because you know how like a lot of celebs are doing this text message thing now. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't even know what's what. It, so it's like the new version of email. Okay. Right, but they're basically like, here's my number. It's not really their number, but yeah. there's a system that this company set up, and it basically you. They send texts to your phone. You could text them right back. And yeah. it literally is that. And it's like the closest proximity that you can have to your fans. Kind of in a way where like Twitter was back in the day. Yeah. Remember how like Twitter, like, do you remember the first celeb you tweeted and they respond to you? Yes. Who? It, it was Manny Pacquiao. But here, let me tell you, you why. fucking Filipino. Yeah, I had to. <laughs> had to. And I'm so happy that you said that. We, uh, <laughs> so true, man. It was Manny Pacquiao. And you're not going to believe why. Go. Because we got his Twitter. <laughs> Wait a minute. You chose the Twitter name? We got Manny Pacquiao and we gave it to him. Oh, dude. Yeah. So that, that Manny Pacquiao verified is because yeah. of us. Do you? It wasn't from his team. And I'm saying it right now. <laughs> we got him that and then we gave it to him. And then uh, and then we were the first ones to tweet him. Like, I remember. Yeah. Yo, that's so crazy about Twitter. I remember I was mind blown that we even got it. I was like, what do you mean he doesn't have Manny Pacquiao? Yeah, he does get punched in the head for a living. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that's so crazy. I remember the first person to respond to me was, um, uh, I forget the, the guy's name, but he was Omar from The Wire. What? What is, it, what is the actor's name? I thought it was Omar. <laughs> yeah. All those people are those people. Yeah, that, that's yeah. really enough. No, what he's, is his name? Michael, Michael K. Williams. K. Williams, yeah. Mm. So Michael K. Williams, Omar from The Wire. I like tweeted this. Um, I was like, how cool would it be if there was a prequel to The Wire, which was the Omar stories, like his rise to fame in Baltimore or whatever. And uh, I just had him in the tweet. He goes, hey, that'd be a great idea, this, that, the other. And I remember losing my shit that I could have this interaction with someone yes. who I like idolize on TV. And I think this is, and now as like, you know, social media has become a little bit more distant. Like now we're posting, you know, Alex and I are posting these videos of yeah. like being on the road, that kind of stuff. It's become almost like a version of TV where there's a little separation. Yeah. It's like, how do you create that intimacy again? So everybody's doing this text message thing. Do you, do you, and I'm glad you said that because, um, I, I really do reply back to my DMS. Yeah, sure. And, I, and I'm up and people always think I'm, I'm crazy or whatever. And I'm like, but if you don't do that, man, they, they start to lose touch with you for sure. And they really, it takes a lot for someone, just like what you said before yeah. you became who you are. Right. That meant a lot to you when 100%. someone reached out to you. Yeah. So like when I do that and I see the reaction, I really feel it. Like uh, there's a lot of people that are numb by that. And I don't understand why you're numb by that. Now you're like a, you're a sensitive dude though, man. I am. I've man. noticed that. Like you got a lot of like love in you. I am. I do. I, and I really appreciate like, like, uh, the grind, like, like, like when I say that to you, I'm being very genuine and you do inspire me. And I, Thank and, you, and it, it literally, I'm not saying that to blow. I, yeah. I think I DM'd you and you said do. that yeah, it's because it's just like, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll watch and I'm like, Fuck! How is he doing that? Yeah, and I gotta learn. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, that's the cool thing about uh, what we do. Like, I, I there's people that hate. Yeah, and that's just a big fucking waste of time. And yeah. then there's people that appreciate and learn. Yeah, and, and get inspired. That's the best compliment you can give somebody. 100%. You know what I mean? You don't have to like somebody for what they do. Or, or, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I don't like that guy style of comedy. That's fine, but you don't got to sit and hate on him. But yeah. you can't get inspired by that person. 100%. Because there's a reason why you're hating on him, because you're not where he's at yeah, just, or where she's at. You're not as successful. Like, I've never heard, like, a, a really wealthy, successful person hate on someone doing worse than them. No. <laughs> it would be petty, right? It would be like, stupid. Yeah, man, like Elon Musk just shitting on some like high school science Yeah, fuck you, project. Chrysler. Send. <laughs> what? What are you Chrysler? talking about? Why'd you send that, Tesla? <laughs> Elon, why'd you do that? Could you let Charlotte? <laughs> exactly. Right? Exactly. Right? He's shitting over the 300. Gas. It ain't even a bed. Gas. 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 Joe Coy. Hey. hey, we got Charlotte in the building. What's happening? Um, we're talking about... We're talking about hate. We're talking about connectivity with fans. I love hate. Uh, you're someone who knows quite a bit about hate. I get it. I get. That's how I connect with my fans. I make them hate me. He he doesn't <laughs> mind this, but you, this is something I noticed that you do. Uh -huh. Is that like if someone puts out false information in the comment section? You will be right there. Well, that's because I just, that's how I'm going to start getting responses from you when you don't text me back. No, I just, I'm just going to text whatever I want in the comment section, and you will fucking be. Because I don't care about like a lie or anything like that, but just uh, like when somebody's just wrong, right? You know what I'm saying? And you yeah. can take the opportunity to teach. Yeah, I take the opportunity to teach. Yeah, that's all. I don't mm -hmm. do it often. 
Nah, you do it often. Really? It's kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of great because it's like and, and yeah, you you're once have... in a while. I want you to know, Charlamagne, mean, you're once in a while is often. Yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But, I'm yeah, yeah. That's, that's else. our often. You know what else you learn <laughs> when you're a, when you have when you're a social media influencer mm. engagement? Yeah. So they right. don't realize they helping us. Yeah. The more they hundred percent talk shit and we reply back, yeah. then they give us three thousand comments. They're helping us. But I love I love your uh, your attitude about it. It's never angry or confrontational it's like it's condescending it is it's it's, it's coming from a place of me looking down yeah, 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 yeah. don't ever think it's twice really, it's hilarious it's really it's obvious <laughs> like, it's I'm, obviously you weren't listening to the episode <laughs> period like you add that period there's a period like nobody needs a period on social media we know the sentence is over we all, no can't be, we all can't be humble like Joe Coy and tell reporters my relatable comedy is was getting me to that, sell out and, arenas and see and this is what I'm talking about Charlemagne being a fucking magician cause that my friend is misdirection <laughs> I didn't fucking say that to the interviewer he wrote that you son of a bitch when was the last time someone get in, got an interview go hey I got a great headline for you my relatable comedy is the reason why I sell arenas who, wait who got this Some, someone the wrote rap. it it the was rap. in a PR the thing rap, yeah. so, oh yeah. that's hilarious see what you did son. now it's my PR guy no. and now it's gonna be it's but gonna that's go when it's it's, out of your word hands. of mouth is gonna oh. go to the point where it's my mom suggested <laughs> my mom hey did you hear about Joe Coy's mom she told him to tell everyone that her relatable comedy is the reason why he's selling out arenas that was a hell of a headline though but this is a headline or it's like the sheet that you get when no it was a headline in. in an article they wrote an article about him it just came out like 15 hours ago and it said Joe Coy's relatable comedy helps him sell out arenas so that's it yeah I don't know if it's the the relatability that does it mm. but you have to be like, who's going to like not relate? Mm. I'm going to go sit in a room and not relate for two hours. <laughs> is there any way I can not understand yeah, what you're saying like, for two hours? Yeah, I like but to I, disagree about everything. I like for the that next though. Two hours. Yeah. I'm the guy that'll click on a Netflix special with somebody I don't know. Yeah. Because I just want to hear a totally different perspective on something. Yeah. You know what I'm ah. saying? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, not, I'm that person. Mm. Yeah, I'm not. Really? Yeah, like I, I like a different perspective, but I'm not dedicating two hours. Do you know what I mean? Like you could, you got your attention me, span dude. is fifteen minutes. You give them fifteen. You minutes. know what? My attention span for a stranger is very short. Mine too. For something I love, yeah, it's long. Yeah, you know, like I can watch seasons of you know Game of Thrones and all these things. It's never enough, and then like watch a review of the show that I just watched. But if it's a brand new idea or topic, like that's what I love about like the the Joe Rogan clips that mm. he has. I don't know if I want to listen to a whole episode with the guests, but if I listen to a seven minute clip, I'm like, oh, okay, this guy's smart. Where's the whole episode? Yeah, but see, yeah, that makes me feel like I'm hearing stuff out of context, though. You, you, and know you what might, I'm saying? you yeah. might, but like you, you post the you post the clips on Instagram from Breakfast Club, and then if there's something interesting or unique or wild, and I'm like, okay, boom, I gotta go get that on YouTube. Yeah. But I don't know if I want to watch a whole cash doll interview. I don't know who that is. I just do it for views. <laughs> I'm being honest I only post them on Instagram because I have a few like, I don't care if you go to YouTube or not. Like, I, I look at everything as separate entities now like I yeah. know we live in this world where we try to connect everything mm -hmm. I don't look at it like that no more mm -mm. I treat I'm, I treat Twitter like Twitter Instagram like Instagram YouTube like YouTube and that's that yeah Yo. anyone that posts uh, an Instagram on their Twitter, mm -hmm. I unfollow you. That's that guy right here. <laughs> oh, who? No, this you don't. Right here. Yeah, he does. Do you really? Yes, he does. I didn't know. I, mean, I think I, that is the laziest person on is. Twitter. It is. You it are is. fucking it lazy. It is. But yeah. I always knew that. He couldn't take the same <laughs> fucking picture. <laughs> The same picture is already in his phone. <laughs> yeah. He couldn't just put it on. No, Twitter. you know why? I, I don't know, want... but every time I'm on this show, every time I think I'm the only one where Charlemagne's the late one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, today he was 25 minutes late. Yeah, Last yeah. time he had his fucking sandals on and yeah. he put them in front of me. Like, he doesn't give two shits. Joe, I'm checking out. It's almost it's over. It's done. Yeah. It's almost done. <laughs> It's almost over. Enjoy it while it lasts. All right. How much, how much, long, how much longer, longer you got? Yeah, Two years? Man, yeah, man. One year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six months? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to have a press conference? Nah. No? What? Why? I don't know. It'd be I'm great. staring at your <laughs> sweatshirt trying to see if this is a mental health shirt or not. Yeah, it says anxiety on it. Oh, it does. Okay, phew. Absolutely. It says anxiety. Yeah, this guy has more mental health apparel. Yeah. <laughs> that I don't <laughs> sell. The fucking joker. That I don't, <laughs> that I don't sell. That I don't sell. You don't sell. No, oh, that's good. I just wait. Like remember oh. we was talking earlier. Mm -hmm. about I got a good health? idea for you, by the way. 
and normalizing the stigma. Yes. Like, that's how you normalize it. That's, it's perfect. that's how black people normalize things by putting it on our clothes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> our lives matter. Matter. <laughs> I swear to God, if you come out with a shirt that says "Got Crazy," you remember the Got Milk? <laughs> if you come out with a shirt that says "Got Crazy," holy shit! Talk about. I don't think I would ever. They do got that, like though. a white, like a mustache. Got crazy. I don't think I would ever do that unless the proceeds went to something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, totally. right. Yeah, I couldn't see myself like capitalizing mental on health that. merchandise. Yeah. I just, I just that wouldn't seem right. You know what I mean? And it's, it's mad people that think, we were talking about it earlier, it's mad people that think people are doing this as a marketing ploy anyway. Like, oh, oh, there are. There are so? people that, yeah, man, there yeah. are some. But I, I, I love, like I told you, man, you you inspired me to talk about my brother, man. And and it's just a huge weight off my chest, bro. Because I'm so sick of like lying. Why? What happened to, with, with your Because uh, I used to, you know, there. I, I told Charlamagne earlier, I talked about my brother one time. It was on I, Aisha Tyler's pod. And yep. I just broke down and started crying because I couldn't believe I finally talked about mm -hmm. it. And because, uh, uh, you know, every time someone interviews me, they're like, you know, how many siblings? And I always just talk about my sisters and, you know, and. And then finally I started talking about my brother and now I just really want to open up about it because of, because of you. But what's wrong with him? Uh, he's got schizophrenia and he's uh, in the you hospital. You and Schultz? Yeah. Come on, bro. Uh -uh. Same Z's. Schultz's brother. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> Schultz's brother swung a punch at me, man. Go, yeah. Did he? Yeah, Yeah. Man. He deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't crazy there. That crazy man knows something. Don't blame that, that on you. Yeah, no, right. yeah, that has nothing to do with his multiple you, person. Charlotte. Hey, hey, right. hey. If Schultz's brother has seven personalities, all seven want to kick your fucking ass. They were all in the green. All of them. They were all, all of them. Yo, all of them were in a huddle yo, like this. So all seven were in a huddle like this. Like, yeah. let's knock Should this motherfucker out. Go you ready, it. guys? Yeah. Right. Go. Yo. Go. Yo, you know how crazy that is if all seven voices are talking to you. All, all of them are saying. Punch him. Yeah. Punch that yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Punch him. Yo, you know how that's true? There was no All of them were character. One was a professor. Yeah. One's a doctor. The other one's a cop. And they were like, you know what? Let's kick this one in the dick. Oh, my God, man. 100%. Yo, this I'm is so, so proud true. of your brother. There was no I'm so proud of your brother. You're not the only one. I want one. you to bring him here more often if you could. Oh, oh, kick him in his dick. Jesus Christ. <laughs> He's going to watch this and be like, I right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I told y'all. Ooh. Ooh, and all I, adding it, the people in his head. Yeah. <laughs> I wish he had like a, a line too, like when he hit. Oh, he did. Oh, he did. He did. Oh, what yo, he said. He leaned in. beautiful. What is Charlemagne's name? Oh, my God. He leaned in. He goes, this is God. <laughs> that was he the did? line. Oh, my God. This is God? This is God. No, but think about it. What is Charlemagne's name? His name is Charlemagne the, the God, God, right? So imagine someone leaned in and it was like, nah, this is God. This is God. And this he was right. God. Don't you try to be God. He I'll show right. you God. Well, God got to be a little bit quicker. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> that's, that's the, the scene of the movie. You need to write this in the movie. Charlemagne, yes, I'm the God. <laughs> By the way, when uh, people start screaming about God in public, Oh, it's, it's going to be a problem. Oh, it's absolutely. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. When people start screaming about God in public in a way like that, you might need to look a, look, be a little alert. I believe that. Be yeah, yeah, yeah. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. My my brother, when he talks, man, uh, and I, I was telling Charlamagne earlier, it's like, he'll give you a window, just a small window. He'll crack it open and be like, there's Robert. That's yep. that's my that's teenage Robert right yep. there. And I loved him. Yep. And then he'll close it real quick on you. Is he on medication? Like, Fuck. Yeah, he's on he's he's in a he's in a hospital. So uh he's not he's not gonna and he knows how to here's what's crazy too, Charlemagne, is oh fuck, man. He knows how to cry, manipulate cry, he knows how to manipulate the system. Um, so so you gotta be sane to be able to do something like that. That's what's confusing to me. What do you mean manipulate like, the system? Okay, so he knows that he needs his medication and, and he knows that he needs help. Mm -hmm. So uh, but the system will only let him in for a certain amount of months. And then the then they're going to be like, okay, he's allowed to go out into general, you know, go yeah. back out. And, and then when he's back out, that's when he go cr he goes crazy. Then he has to do something. He has, mm. has to physically hurt somebody, steal somebody. Hey, that's that way up. the court. And then the court sends him back in. Yeah. But see, what's crazy is he knows he has to do that. He yeah. knows that's the only way he's going to get his medicine. He knows that's the best place to get food and get and have a you know he lives in Seattle, so that's that's a nice warm place to sleep. So he has to do that. I wonder if he knows that or if he really just can't control himself when he's I, not in that container. No, no, that's no. what I was thinking they're, too. But they're aware on some level. Like there's this is the most amazing thing in the world is that even in someone who's like going through bouts of like hysteria, they're basically crazy. Yeah, 
there is like a like yearning to survive still. Like no matter how dark you oh, get, yeah. you want to live. Yep. You want to survive. Yeah, you don't want to take your life. You don't want to take exactly. your life. Exactly. And you realize, okay, if I keep on doing this, going down this crazy path, I might either take my life or I might put my life so much in danger that it might end. Mm-hmm. Where can I be safe? Hospital. Hospital. Yep. Yeah, but if, if they're in the hospital on their meds, of course they wouldn't be acting out. But if they're not in the hospital and they're not on their meds, wouldn't just the natural thing to do would be to act out? I think you start acting out more, but also like not being in the hospital is pretty anxious. Like the hospital creates like a a pretty calm environment, right? It's almost like, you know how like people who maybe struggle without structure, they go into the military and then they can thrive because they have this structure, right? The hospital kind of presents them with that. Food is there. Everything's there. They don't have to socialize if they don't want to. Mm -hmm. But imagine you're someone who's like, you know, socially awkward and you get a little bit paranoid and you're forced to socialize every single Mm -hmm. day. It's just going to heighten that. Mm -hmm. Uh, You feel more and more isolated. You? Yeah, in a lot of ways, like I think I'm, 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 I'm more socially awkward. But we're forced to be around people every day and forced to engage. People How are you every socially day. awkward? I you'll say, you'll what, say, fucked to, up shit. Go, you don't see me anywhere, shows. Like honestly, outside of this, where do you see me? Wait, are you talking about socially awkward How when there's I a group of people? You? Because, oh, yeah. because socially awkward, like. When you engage conversational, uh, yeah. when you conversate with people, there's nothing awkward about you. It might be a different, and that, and that's might, crazy because usually when you say socially awkward, that's people that can't talk or express yeah, how they crippled. feel. Yeah. Like that's, that's hard, man. I think in a lot of ways in a perfect world, I could sit in silence with people and not care. But I feel like if I'm sitting there in silence, they're going to think something's wrong because they're so used to me talking all the mm. time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you feel an expectation to entertain almost. Boom, baby, yeah. that's it. Maybe that I don't know. Maybe it's just something. It's a but I would much rather just not say anything. I can I, I can, I can, I can be in total silence. Yeah, you can. Do we you all voice can. your opinion? I'm sorry, Andrew. Go, go, go. Do go. you voice your opinion when you're not in this environment? Like, do you is this like your your superpower? Does hmm. this make you confident when you're here like this? But when you're outside, say just out at in Central Park hanging out, can you still express the way you do? If I'm having a conversation with somebody, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to just start talking to all of Central Park. If me and somebody are engaging one-on-one, but even that is odd. You know, sometimes people will walk up to you, say, what's up? And I don't really have anything else to say, but yeah. they'll be sitting there waiting for a deeper conversation. Or they yeah. might even ask me a question and I'm like, I, yeah, I might give them a one word answer. Not, not in a disrespectful way. It's just like, this is the platform for that. Like, do you feel... Mm. The need like you don't tell jokes all the time, right? No, no, mm-hmm. but but I remember when 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 I'm I first funny all the time though. Yes. <laughs> I've heard. What, what? Me, I'm so fucking. No, I think you are, Joe. <laughs> I do. I believe in you. <laughs> I do. I do believe in you. <laughs> I do Did you say I believe in I you? I believe in you. I do. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it, Schultz. You can also compliment. I relate. Thank to you. I relate to you. <laughs> 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 Thank you for two hours. I mean, at least two, two hours. hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will be there two selling hours. out those arenas you, for you. I love you because you are so relatable to me. Um, yeah. I think uh, I think what happened, like when I first got guy code, and then I would meet people after I was on TV. I felt this pressure to like live up to their expectation. Of yeah, me. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. And then after that went away. I basically, there was a time where I could walk the streets again, like no one would know me. And I was like, okay, that's the difference. You know, I was like, there was a little bit of fame and then there's none of it. There's anonymity. And then, you know, once the YouTube stuff started popping again and people would stop me again, I was like prepared for those moments. And I was like, yeah, I don't have to be funny every Mm -hmm. single time. Like they already know, they see that. That's fine. I don't have to prove that the person that they saw on television or on the internet is that person yeah. in real life. It's as simple as, hey, thank you, appreciate it. Maybe even a conversation. I just figured it out. Y- y'all made me figure it out. I think that I'm more socially awkward now only because I know it's only certain people who will understand mm-hmm. the conversation. Yes. Like, you know, that's why we got the group chat. Or like, yes. is it certain, like, I'd be wanting to say certain shit out loud, but I'm like, not here. Not, not, it's not yes, a safe yes, space. Yes, 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 yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, 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 You know what I mean? Like, and, I, and I know some people that understand me. They know my sense of humor. They know my intent. Yeah. So if I'm saying something, they know it's not coming from a malicious place. There's only a select few of people nowadays mm-hmm. I can do. I yes. can be that around. Yes, and you know that I mean? becomes smaller and smaller. Yeah, yeah. man. People yeah. be having phones out when you just be regular talking. So you know, yeah, yeah. you got to talk like LeBron and D. Wade. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's man, not fun. You're not fucking up this China bag. No, that's true. There is like a heavy cost. There's a 
cost for saying the wrong thing now, especially. And there are people that like actively want to capture you saying the wrong yes. thing. Yes. So then I, I hundred yes. percent see your anxiety on an yes. everyday basis. But yo, there's something so refreshing. I hate those people, by the way. Dude, the I fucking, the fucking hate those parasites, people. Scum of the earth. But the uh, th there's a what I've realized now is like there's a real like when you're around. How do I how do I phrase it? By your people, I don't mean the people who look like you, but when you're around like your tribe you in try. terms of like how you can express yourself, mm -hmm. it's crazy how much energy that gives you. Yeah. When man. you stop conforming, you know what I mean? Like when you stop conforming to fit the group setting you're in and literally around the people where you get to be yourself with. Yeah. Bro, battery in my back. That's Absolutely. it. Once yeah. a month, one dinner a month yes. with like the homies. Yes. Get it all out. I'm charged. Yes. Up. It's yep. like therapy. It's fucking therapy it's because like therapy. you remember who you are. You're yes. like, oh shit, I can't yeah. say this stuff. I don't have to like watch my tongue yes. or these yeah. people understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, it's crippling to walk around every single day going, can I say that? Yeah, Especially yeah, yeah. in a business where we have to say shit. Yeah. It's not like we're, like it'd be different if we were chefs and we didn't have to talk. You just express yeah. through the food. Yeah. We literally express through saying shit. Yeah, and you know what? Even as a father, um, you know, it's like, you know, me and my wife been together 23 years. So this is, High school, mm. the worst of me. Mm. When, you know, when she started going to college, still the worst of me. Mm -hmm. So we're used to talking to each other in a certain way, but now we got these little kids around. So now you got to bite your tongue. And, yes. Oh, yeah. like, you know, and, and I'm a very, when you home, you're a very active person. Like, look at that. Yeah, but then yeah. you got to catch yourself and be like, I'll tell you later. You know what I'm saying? Or you yeah. got to tell it a certain way to where she gets it, but you're not really explaining it the way you would explain it if the kids 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like it's always this constant. Uh, oh, no, I get it with you now. Filter and self-checking. I get it's it. crazy. 100%. Though. This, is, this is interesting. As long as I've known you, you're the type of person where if you feel something, you have to purge it. Yes. Like you throw up easy. Yes. You know what I mean? Very sensitive stomach for your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Now you've entered a world... Not only at home, but in the workplace mm -hmm. and in regular life, where you can't just word vomit Hell or no. thought vomit like you used to. It feels like the mics are always hot. Mm -hmm. Boom! So now you're walking around with this shit inside you that your stomach has never been okay with throughout yes. your entire life. And your way of dealing it throughout your entire life was just getting Letting it out. It out yeah. So you need places where you can get it out. Absolutely. You need like the break room, you know that shit where you just destroy TVs, but you need that just for like words. I mean, that's what therapy is in a lot of ways, but even. My therapist is there for like personal unpacking of things. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the group chat, man. It's you the need... dinners, like you said, when, when we when it's just us. Yeah. And we can just talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and, and not me, but somebody's throwing out a maggot for old time's mm -hmm. sake. Yes. You know? <laughs> you, Why do I agree with that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know Whoa. what's funny is uh when you said how uh you're 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 uh, you have to watch your tongue now because you have kids, right? Yeah, yeah. But the most unfiltered conversation are watching kids talk. Mm. Yes. Because they have no idea the they definition of what to. they're saying. Absolutely. And they're and they're just enjoying it. It's just pure. And they're, bro. And and it's like and, and it's not until they get into like a, around working adults with fucking sensitive feelings mm. that that those definitions start becoming serious topics. But when it's my son hanging out with all different colors. And they don't know the difference between race, religion, or yeah, any of that yeah, because yeah, that's yeah. taught. All that learned behavior. Yeah, like but but when they're hanging out, dude, I sit there and hear these kids and they're laughing. I don't I don't say anything. I let them. I let them have their their kid conversations. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, I had those conversations. Yeah, and I'm gonna let them. You know what I mean? And and that's the beauty. I mean, that's the beautiful thing. Like my like my four year old is amazing because she just don't care. But I, I think my daughter, my oldest daughter, is 11, and I've seen her like. You know, we have people at the house and she'll be like, what's wrong with your teeth? Ooh. And it's the My adult son? that everybody's teeth is Bro, that's like, so funny. Fuck. You, you just know brought this me. Needs <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's, you know that's what I mean? your goddamn kid. Really right there. That's your kid, kid, bro. That's your kid. Wow. But it's not, it wasn't ill intent. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was. 100%. Look, 100%. Don't ever. That's your blood. That was all ill intent right there. What the fuck wow. is in your mouth that you call teeth? That's the Are you going to swallow that? Or is that connected? to your gums my dad wants to know <laughs> she's kind of funny she's she's right there, like, I was curious I was I mean, just curious there's a lot of options I know nowadays. she was going to say it <laughs> what if she turned to you and said dad I said what you told me to say yeah, you know. 
God damn, I told you I'm purging. <laughs> now the cat's out the bag. What the fuck is wrong with you two? What is in your mouth? Let's all oh, talk no. about this. Is that candy corn? By the way, I've been, I've been telling my daughter since she was three, my oldest daughter, the things you hear in this house do not repeat. But that's yeah. hard, bro. Yeah, man. That's hard. I said that to my son, too. And she's so funny now because she'll be around certain people that she's heard us talking about and she'll just be... Mm. Just looking at them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so she's yeah. putting it together even I love at three. It. They can... Well, she's 11 now. Oh, okay. You know I bet you your, your daughter has eyes and it's like the Terminator eyes. like Or the Predator eyes. You just see dad. And, <laughs> and, then it says, and then it says engage. What's wrong with your teeth? <laughs> and then looks at her dad. Right? 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 Did I make someone feel right, uncomfortable dad? today? Oh. Dad, is that what we need to do? Oh my God. Whatever's inside of us that's eating us up inside, let out, right, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> Let's pay some bills. Joe Coy has to leave. I love you so much. I love you too, Joe. Joe, man. Joe, tell them, tell them about the show. Tell yes. them where they can see you. Tell um, them everything, man. Go to Joe Coy, J O K O Y. I'm coming to uh, Radio City Music Hall in May. I'm at NJ Pack and uh, Borgata this weekend. Amazing. NJ Pack, Borgata this weekend, JoeCoy.com. Chokeo.com. J O K O T. K O. Selling out arenas all over the world. It's really impressive to see what you're doing. Yeah, they're sold out too, by the way. Which ones? NJ Pack. And Borgata. Borgata, yeah. All right, so you can't go. You got here a little too late. Joe just came here for the love. I came here for you guys. Yeah, that's all. It was a little light flex. Dude, man, why do you hate all the time? (laughs) Not hate. Look at this. Look. Why do you hate all the time? Huh? I just snatched your face. Why do you hate all the time? What? Why you hate? I got that from your daughter. Hey, I got that from your daughter. Why do you hate all the time? Huh? <laughs> Joe Coy, listen. No, for real. Congratulations, man. Thank you so much, I'm happy man. Happy for you, man. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. And you man. did it your fucking way. Facts. Thank you, man. I love you guys. Love you, bro. Inspiring, both of you. Thank so you, man. Take it as a compliment when you see me doing shit. Absolutely. It's, it's literally inspired by you guys. Seriously, what I said to you earlier, I meant that from my heart. Love and you, man. You, I, I mean it 100%, Shul. So you're the shit, bro. Thank you, man. And we all love you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Peace, Joe Coy. You ain't got no entourage? Quick, uh, Always. Oh. I don't know why I talked to this. Let's do a little pick. <laughs> said, oh. Now, f- first of all, what did we think of the debates last night? Did anybody watch? Hell no. Yeah, it was more of the same. Um, I think that we're at we're at the point now where they can cut like seven people. Who's who who goes for you? Um, Andrew Yang can go. Is that because of the China NBA thing, or is that? Um, yeah, I'm pro Hong Kong. Um, no, <laughs> no, I don't fucking know. Please, I don't know I don't NBA. Why the fuck I care? I don't know anything about that shit. Mm-hmm. But no, uh, Andrew Yang can go. Um, uh, 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 Amy Amy Kobachal can go. Tom Steyer can go. Julian Castro can go. Cory Booker can go. Um, Tosi Tosi uh, Gabbard Gabbard she can go. And it's uh, and, and Beto. Beto can Beto go. Beto, yeah, Beto can go. He can go. Hmm. Just keep it to the five. Keep it to uh, Biden. Keep it to Warren. Keep it to Harris. Keep it to Buddha Judge. Keep it to Sanders. Those are the five that really look like they got the best chance of winning. I know was everybody Bernie likes back to... out there. With oh, his Bernie heart was thing? smoking last night. How do you see him? Seem fine. Hmm. I'm not gonna front. After I watched that last night, I said to myself, I said, "Man, Bernie might be the safest bet, bro." He really is. I'm not gonna lie. I said I thought that to myself when it was all said and done, only because. He seems so genuine, like he really cares. I didn't like the I didn't like the question they asked him about being old, even though it is a valid question, because the question was kind of like, I don't want to say it was a trick question, but they asked him basically, you know, can he predict the future of his health? None of us can. Of course not. And no matter how old you are. Wait, what? The question. You got that shit? You don't got that shit. So if you tell me if I hit this button right now. Well, uh, let me invite you all <laughs> to a major rally we're having in Queens, New York. We're going to have a special guest at that event. Father and Tom. we are going to be mounting a vigorous campaign all over this country. That is how I think I can reassure the American people. But let me take this moment, if I might, uh, to thank so many people uh, from all over this country, including many of my colleagues up here, for their love, for their prayers, for their well wishes. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I'm so happy to be back here with you this evening. The illest part, you, you didn't you cut the part where he shouted out Blue Chew? Yo, shut up. <laughs> nah, he did. He said that's what got his heart back going. Blue Chew. Yes. <laughs> 
promo the code flow. flagrant. <laughs> Make sure you use that promo code flagrant. Blue now, Chew. He God did say, Bernie a lot. He, he, did, he did say he wasn't on weed last night, but I just I just feel like they should just cut it down to the five. Let those five go at it. Because I think it's so whack to have 10, 12 people on stage. Because that shit is really like an IG story, bro. Like these motherfuckers be trying to fit all this shit in 15 seconds yes, before Anderson here, Cooper son. or Aaron Burnett or somebody is cutting them off. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't think they're, we're doing the American people any justice by just letting them talk for 35, 40 yeah. seconds and cutting them off. Like, how do you really get to know a person? Tell me your thoughts on the Kamala Harris saying uh, that we got to shut down um, Trump's Twitter. I agree with him. Talk to me why. Because he's not like a... You, you can't be the president of the United States of America tweeting like a Twitter nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can really... You can really cause world wars because of your tweets. Like, yeah. you can really... Yeah. Cause civil wars because of your tweets. Like shift you can markets, really, shift yes, man. You can't like, like it. It. He shouldn't want to be on Twitter. You know how we. You know how we sit around, right? And we like, yo, man. Let's let's be careful. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't want to fuck some shit up. <laughs> like he shouldn't want to do that. Like you don't you're even the check his spelling. You're the president <laughs> yeah. of the United States yeah. of America. Like yep. you can't have that low of an emotional IQ and and have that much power. At your fingertips, bro. Like you, yeah. I, that, that's my. I'm not, I don't. I'm not. I'm not shutting him down because of what he's saying. Right. I'm just shutting him down because of the threat that he creates for the whole fucking world. I think. Um. I think you make really good points, and I think it's compelling. Uh. I, my my one concern would be like, if we don't want a president doing that, I think we have to elect one that won't do that. But no president ever has. Right. He's setting a new standard, right? Yeah. And, and that's the beauty of the fact that every four years we get to right our wrongs. And I know he could tweet the wrong thing and a war could happen within that time, 100%. But like, I think that um, ultimately a democracy will will decide. My concern with that and why I can't support Kamala Harris as a presidential candidate anymore is it's just censorship. So my whole career is, is really held in flux with this idea that I should be able to say whatever I want anytime. And if she's willing to shut down the president of the United States of America's Twitter, what's she going to do to my YouTube page? What's she going to do to my Instagram? I already been shadow banned by Instagram. It's like, I got to deal with this censorship all the time. That is just a way of like, not only quieting my freedom of speech, but quieting my freedom to make money and provide for my family. So I don't, I don't mind her. I don't mind Donald Trump saying whatever the fuck he wants to say. Like every other president in a, a state of the union, Right. Are, uh, are doing his uh, weekly briefings, which it, he it also shut down. It can't down. be policy. That's it the problem. It can't be policy. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's, it's very slippery because you don't want to mess with the First Amendment. You don't want to mess with right. anybody's right to say anything. But this is policy, and policy has to be vetted. And this shit doesn't yes. feel like it's being vetted. None. And it's a very right. unique situation. So maybe, maybe there's a rule that has you know more to do with, who knows? Maybe there's a rule, maybe there's policy. I, I actually like the fact that a president can push back uh, against media narratives. Um, I'm not saying that I essentially like what he's putting out there. For me, that's unimportant. But I like the fact that we know that the media is compromised, right? We know Fox News is going to have a conservative fucking angle about everything. They're not mm -hmm. going to give you the real news. They're going to give you that angle. We know that CNN is going to have the Democratic left wing. Mm -hmm. angle. We know. So they're both compromised. So whenever they're being either supportive of cr or critical of the president, we know it's not the truth. Sometimes it might be a clock is a blo broken clock is depends right two times on. a day, but it depends who's on. Right. Yeah. But so I like the fact that as a personal entity, if CNN tweets something about me or does a story about me or Fox does a story about me, Andrew Schultz, the comedian, I like that I can get on my own social media platforms and go, this is bullshit. You want to know the truth? Here it is. But, he's of but 90% of the time he's lying. That's the issue. So yeah. we got to be better at vetting out our presidents. We got to be better at going, this guy, we need a guy who's going to tell the truth. We need, listen, that's why I don't like Tom, and I like, I liked when, when what's his name, Tom Steyer? When Tom Steyer was on The Breakfast Club, I enjoyed our conversation with him. Mm -hmm. But guys like that are what's wrong with America. Go. You should not be able to be a billionaire and, and buy your way into American politics. And that's what he did? Yeah. He spent tens of millions of dollars to run commercials. And don't get me wrong, he was running commercials saying Trump should be impeached a couple of years ago. And that's fine. You're using your money to be a compassionate capitalist. You know what I'm right. saying? You're using your money to get a message out there that you want. You're letting the American people know what this guy has been doing. Uh, you know, the media's not doing a good job of it. So you decide to buy ads, run commercials, talk about all of the different infractions that he's, that he's had that, that caused him to that should be impeached. But that don't give you the right to want to run for motherfucking president. Like, I think there should be qualifications. Like, you should not be able to run for president if you've never been in any fucking public office ever. You don't think you should be in some type of, you should have some type of experience in politics? Would help. 
I think it, I think it I think it would definitely help. I think uh um, be a, at least be a mayor. L- let me ask you I this. I just though. don't think that I, I I don't know. My my whole feeling on being a president is is that like or any political position is you don't have to be good at anything. Like you don't have to be elite or an expert in anything. It, the one thing that you should be good at if you're a president is the one thing Trump doesn't do, which is fucking listen and take orders. That's it. So, <laughs> so it's like the one thing that I want my president to be able to do, or not even president. It's like anybody in that type of CEO position, right? I want you to surround yourself with people that are smarter and better than you. Yeah. It's like when I come in here and I do this podcast every week, I know you are better than me at radio and it makes me lift my level and I try to get better every single day, right? That helps me. That's who I want to be around when I'm doing, when I'm on the road, when I'm doing at these comedy clubs, I want to be at the best comedy club so I could be better, right? I feel like Trump has those people around him. He no, don't the opposite. The I don't opposite. Feel, bro, I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. Y'all not going to sit here and act like Rudy Giuliani was not one of the best mayors America has ever mother. He definitely Even was not. Before Ru- he certainly was not. Rudy Giuliani really? didn't clean New York up? I mean, at what price? How in a bad way? How do you clean up a place in know. a bad I, way? I, I, I was know. here during it. You tell were here me. during it. Well, tell me. Tell me. Tell me. <coughs> Ow, he shut here, down here. all the weed shops. Oh. For starters. I mean, just like the way they were cutting down crime. Like, I remember being a young, like, 14-year-old or whatever, driving and... Cops just pulling me over for no reason, getting illegally searched for no reason. Because you were 14, 14 driving. Yeah, they should have no, pulled no, no, me over. <laughs> 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 Good job, officer. I just want to do hood rap things with my friend. <laughs> I was the one driving, but I was uh, like just in the car. Right. And it was during that time when it was they were just like really shutting down crime. How was bad like, was New York at the time? Because from what I hear, New York was, New York was really New fucked York up. Was so was you got to go, you got to take it here. To get it down to the air. He not, yo, he not wrong, bro. Like, I'm not gonna lie. When I was growing up, when North Face was popping, me and every single one of my friends when we were in middle school got robbed for our North Face in one month. I had eight friends get our North Faces taken in one month. That's how rampant just robbing people was. It and was, that's still and happening th- in different areas. Chris, he cleaned up Manhattan for sure. He cleaned up Manhattan. M- most Brown, of Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Brooklyn. 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 If you go to East New York, it's crazy still. But if you're no, in my Williamsburg, crazy right Bushwick, now. if you're in but whatever he, that he's Carol not in control Gardens no or that's some why. shit. Listen, didn't he fucking dismantle the mob? No. No, he, no, he did. He went I after the mob I thought dismantled big. the mob before he was even mayor. As a prosecutor, that was his claim to fame. I don't think he totally did it, but... Not Chris, stop. Sorry, you you gotta get, let go of your bias sometime, Chris. Listen, if if the man has done things, give him props for what he's done. Facts. Don't don't look at him now and be like, I don't fuck with him. Because my point with this whole conversation is, why is Rudy Giuliani ruining his legacy for Donald Trump? I don't actually just think he was that great. I think he was the mayor during 9-11, and to his credit, like he presented a forceful personality that people could kind of rally around. So you don't about. think he cleaned up New York at all? He absolutely cleaned up New York. I've he absolutely heard he cleaned I've up New York. I think, he cl- I, I, I think Bloomberg was more instrumental in terms of, because Bloomberg brought the money in. I mean, Rudy's thing was crime, but in terms of the development, which is what really cleaned it up, the money coming in, I, I credit more of that to Bloomberg. No, the crime went away before Bloomberg was here. Mm. Bloomberg came about in a time of prosperity, and then he invested his own money into yeah. the city, which was great. But you can't deny... Look, I lived it, bro. I grew up here as a fucking kid in a dangerous... I'm talking about my friends were getting robbed on the Upper East Side. We weren't getting robbed in Brooklyn. I got robbed outside of the Manhattan Mall, a and Plaza, in the most populated fucking okay. part. People were robbing people. You got That's robbed? Times Square, son. It's basically Times Square. Imagine getting robbed. Imagine how fucking ballsy kids had to be to rob you in the most populated part of the world. You you robbed someone there? Was, <laughs> that was you? <laughs> That's why they pulled you over in that car, you little fucking robbery 14-year-old. Yeah. Look, they call, they call Rudy the mob buster. Yeah, he did. It was like it was like he he launched a major mafia sweep in the eighties when he was U.S. attorney. Come on, come on, bro. He said he took the Chris, mob come down. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You don't want to give him credit I'm because just, just, and this stuff, this stuff I what? read. Yeah. So, so when I was reading this stuff, I was like, why is Rudy ruining his legacy for Donald Trump? It it is curious because what what's happening with this whole shit, the Ukraine shit or whatever, bro? They I got, don't know what, what happened with that. Listen, they got Donald Trump then pinned up against the wall, and Donald Trump said nobody cooperate. Like Pence said, I'm not cooperating with the impeachment inquiry. Rudy Giuliani said, we're not turning over shit for the impeachment inquiry. Like, they don't give a fuck. But the Dems, I heard today, the Dems said they're not going to go through with it. No, no. They said, 
What, they, what, they, what they're telling the Republicans is we don't have to vote. You know, they don't, it doesn't have to be a House vote. Like the Constitution says, you do not have to do a House vote to do an impeachment inquiry. But history has shown us they've always done one. They right. did one with Nixon. They did one with Clinton. So Pence and Trump and them are saying, fuck that. We're not turning over shit. We're not uh, responding to no subpoenas, even though they never respond to subpoenas, <laughs> right. until y'all do this vote. And Nancy Pelosi was like, we don't have to. So that's the tug of war right so now. So they're still going to impeach. They just don't need to do they the— They don't need to vote. Interesting. I thought they were just dropping it. That's what the no. it and seemed like. said that yesterday. She was like, "We don't have to vote." But that's what Trump and Mike Pence and all of them are saying. Until y'all do a vote, really calling a bluff, right? <laughs> Until y'all do a vote, we not answering shit. But they don't answer shit anyway. And <laughs> like, they don't answer so they're shit just no buying way. time. This they're whole stalling. shit is just stalling. It's probably not going to lead to anything. Of course, it's not. But they have to do it. I mean, you can't. You can't allow. They'll get them impeached. To- He'll get impeached. He'll do but a trial it, and all that. He won't show up. You about to see some shit. Listen, y'all he, about to see some shit that y'all ain't never seen before. Oh, yeah, before. he will. What you mean? Trump, don't, Trump ain't, he don't give a fuck. fuck. He's lawless. He don't give a fuck about democracy. He's wiping his ass with the Constitution. Well, well outside of that, For he's real. also setting a precedent with Biden, which I think is quite interesting. He's setting a precedent where he's like, if you come for me, not only am I coming for you, I'm coming for your family. And every one of these politicians, Nancy Pelosi included, every one of these politicians has gotten their family members jobs and opportunities because of their positions in government. So Trump is setting his precedent like, oh, y'all think I'm the only crooked one. Y'all think I'm the only one doing deals, right? Y'all think I'm the only one. What, what's that? Oh, OK. I don't know what's going on right now. But y'all, y'all think I'm the only one doing deals, right? No, all of us do deals. This is exactly what happens. So going after the Hunter, Hunter Biden kid, they're like, oh, you're going to come for me? It's on. And he'll go after Pelosi and the people she's helped. He'll go after all of them. So now these politicians have to weigh their options. They're like, do we really want to come for him? Because I might have some skeletons. I loved what Joe Biden did yesterday. Though. What are you, what are you saying? It? Just having Hunter Biden do an interview today at a debate. I thought it was great. What it you, reminded what? me of Succession. You guys watch Succession? Uh-uh, what is that? It's a show on HBO. It's about a... Oh, I haven't seen it yet. It's, it's very good, but they... It, similar thing where they put the family members up and what did he say basically well I liked what he did because it took the narrative away from Trump so now mm. the questions that Joe Biden would be asked about that situation would be based on what Hunter Biden said yesterday right. and not what Trump and them said a week or so ago and if you notice that's all Biden kept doing he kept deflecting he was like as Hunter said, as Hunter said my son admitted he was wrong yada yada, yada. Right. Like, so it, it took the narrative it took they changed the narrative basically he owned it he, he, um. Yeah, he did. He owned it. But but more importantly, they knew that they was going to be hitting Joe Biden with a bunch of questions about that shit. But now the questions came from what Hunter said instead right. of as opposed to what Trump, Trump and them said, said. Smart. I thought Take it was. It. I thought I it think was it's great. still going to hurt him pretty seriously. Yo, Biden. Though. Yeah. Seems older to me than Bernie. Bro, Biden is literally toast. Yo, granddad. Yo, yo, man, I think granddad's slipping, bro. I right. think it might be time. <laughs> like, like, right? Like, he just How be is saying nobody seeing anything. this? Everybody sees it. Okay, so it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah, knowledge, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, oh, my God. Bernie thank seems God. sharper. Elizabeth seems sharper. I just don't think Elizabeth stands a chance because I just don't think she can get enough of those center, center right people. The soccer moms. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she's not going to get center right. I don't see but it. But why will Bernie be able to get them? It's I interesting. Don't know if he so, will. My, my, not even center right. I got, you know, I have uncles, they all vote for Trump. And I remember one of my uncles telling me the only Democrat that I could ever, ever vote is for is Bernie. Yo. Because I believe him. Bernie I don't VP think he's is very shit. important. Crucial. You know why? Why? Because he might die. All right. That's what that's no, for real. Like, you know, for real. For real. That's who we vote. That, it, 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 for that reason. And also just because it's like, if Ber- imagine Bernie, I don't know if it would, how it would hurt him with his base, though, if Bernie was with Senator Harris. Yo, yo, what about this? I think that's the most likely one. I would like Warren, but I think it'll be Harris. No, no, nah, what, they'll never vote for Bernie Warren this? again. What if Bernie, and this is what I would do if I'm Bernie, what if Bernie picks a reasonable, conservative running mate? What if he's like, we need to stop this polarization, we need to be able to work together. Back in the day, when a president was elected, the person he ran against became the vice president. This is early America, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. What if we change? What if we not? We don't have to change the system. But what if I come out and I make a promise to conservative Americans say you will be heard because you will have someone in the White House 
That would never happen right now. You could do that maybe with a libertarian because I think in terms of fair, policy, fair, fair. that's, so, that's someone closer. who's not super conservative. Right, like, right. but maybe a libertarian, maybe maybe someone who can really appeal to mm-hmm. the right wing people and be like, listen, I think this guy's reasonable or this girl's reasonable. I think they're smart, and I want to hear what they have to say, and I want to inform me. You know where I'm going. You know my politics. You know what I'm trying to make happen in this country. Yeah. But it's important that the, there are people heard, and we need to bridge the gap. If he did that shit. Who Biden was for Obama. Yo, that's exactly. Alex said a great Obama. point. Alex goes, "That's who Biden was for Obama." Biden and it was, was the most racist Democrat that they could find. And they're like, "I feel comfy now." <laughs> yes. No. For real. Oh yeah, that's strong. That's strong, boy. Oh, he did the eighty eight crack laws. We got a crack bill. Oh yeah, he good. Let the black out. Matter of fact, we planning on killing Obama anyway. So he's gonna. He gonna <laughs> I'm serious. But in a way, that's Harris out of the candidates that are out there because exactly. she's kind of the most right center. Exactly. To me, and exactly. Harris qualifies Bernie, right. in a way with minorities, it's yeah, there. I color. just hate the tw- I, woman of color, a woman, Pro, a prosecutor, so they know yeah. she's not, not bullshitting about the crime. cops are going to be on point. Yep. Say what you want about yep. the cops and like how they vote and maybe how they tr- the support tr- when they support Trump, but when cops see a cop up there, it's going to be very easy to be like, I don't know if we're with this Trump guy. Yeah, I it's, might fuck with this. Except cop. that not all cops fuck with her because she kind of flipped in San Francisco and there's some. There's but a that's, that's the point. Yeah. Of, that's the part. That's the point of being center though. Right, you know what I'm saying? You're not like make everyone happy. That, that's yeah. what she doesn't get enough credit for. She doesn't get enough credit for being center. Right, it's a lot of situations she's looked at, she's assessed, she's made good moves, she made bad. I'm not even gonna say good moves, bad moves. She's made moves people agree with. Moves she's made people agree. don't agree with. She's pissed off cops. She's pissed off civilians. Mm-hmm. That's just the way the game but goes. Th- this would be my counter argument to that. Can white middle America look at her and understand that she's actually center, even leaning right in a lot of ways? If or do they, they just see a black woman and then they get scared? If they're listening to what's coming out of her mouth. Yeah, but we know that truth, doesn't the, happen. The truth to the matter is, that's, listen, uh, Bernie's getting endorsed this weekend by three three members of the squad. Yep. yep. They, those are all women of color. Yep. So clearly what's that's coming out of Bernie too. mouth is connecting more than what's coming out yeah, of but Kamala's. Th- that endorsement, the endorsement from those three women, I think could hurt Bernie. He's going to pay for it too. Nah. Pay for it, meaning they're the boogie, not boogie men, boogie women to you're the not, Fox you're not, you're crowd. Not, you're you know not, what I mean? Y'all not thinking. Y'all not thinking. No, no, no. Real quick, real quick. And I mm-hmm. actually, matter of fact, break it down. Break it down because I, it's I, simple I have to a me, question. And I, and I could be totally wrong. Yep. Youth. That large swath of that new was my youth initial, voters. That was my yeah, initial yeah. reaction. They don't. They they love them. For, first of all, agreed, hundred um, percent. My one question is: now you're giving, now you're giving. Bernie, you're giving Trump ammunition against Bernie because Trump can go, he is the communist. He is with these people who are, oh, this is brilliant. I didn't even think about it. You can't call Bernie an anti-Semite. No. Yeah. You can't call Bernie anti-Jewish because oh, he's Jewish. You got it. Yeah. Fucking God. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, and of yeah, course yeah. the squad. And they cover themselves. The course the squad support him because then they get to go see. We're not anti-Jewish. Absolutely. We support the Jewish guy. Bro, Lin- Linda Sarsour shit. supports Bernie Sanders. Three-fourths of the squad. Cardi B. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, so now that they have that support, yeah. who is going to be the, the centrist person? It could be Kamala. I'm going to get Kamala or I might go get Stacey Abrams. Not Stacey. Stacey's I might go not get Stacey. center enough. You need center, the bro. South, you need though. conservative. Yeah, but it's a different South. It's not a yeah. South. You honestly, you need a centrist conservative, dude. You need a who is the who is the centrist conservative? Who is the Biden, bro? There's a guy Who's in Pennsylvania. Biden? I think I Senator the Harris. Name. It's that's it'd be that sort of guy. He's considered, you know, he's taking on the NRA, but he's a Republican. You're looking for somebody like yeah. that. Can't have a white male, man. You're right. Can't have a white male. I, I think you could. Can't have two white males on a ticket. Only person can, Trump can get away with that. He, and Bernie, got, you got to have you got to have some color. Bro. I think you could. I nah. think you could if it was the right idea. Because now, remember, Bernie's got support from the squad. He's got support from all these people. So he's going to be wrapped up in the color. His campaign, his kids, his campaign, his administration would have to be so diverse. It will. Like it would have to be super diverse. Like I'm talking about like bag of Skittles, bro. <laughs> like for real. Like it would have to be like mad colors, mad genders, mad sexuality. Like if you got two white guys on the ticket, yeah. it'd have to be super diverse, and, bro. And the two white guys make all the conservatives comfortable, right? But matter of fact, you need white Christian guy. Because they're going to be Christians that look at Bernie and they're going to be like, I don't know if we trust these Jewish yeah, guys. Yeah, the Jew thing hasn't really come thi- to the head yet. It and will. it's gonna. It Tim will. Gonna. It will hurt. Tim yeah. Ryan. Talk to me. Mm-hmm. Tim Ryan. I like Tim Ryan. I like he's, he's from Ohio. Um, you know, he's big on social and emotional learning and mental health. 
I'm he's, he's to play football. He's like a he's win just, that Ohio he's vote. Yeah, that's win that Ohio yeah, vote. He's like, that's he's a like, big vote. Yeah, he's like a he's like a center guy. You know what I'm saying? He's just he's just a solid dude. Like I I like Tim Ryan a lot. I can't believe I don't know why he didn't catch fire in any way, shape, or form. It was tough this year, man. I felt the same way about Gilbrand. I thought she was going to be the one that. Emerged. I thought she was a little goofy. Yeah, but I thought she, she was a little goofy. I thought she could appeal to those soccer moms, the yeah. kind of ones she, right she, on the offense. I see it, dude. That Tim Ryan thing might be a wave, man. He can take on Pence when they do the <laughs> vice president. I like Tim debate. Ryan a lot. Yeah. Man. I hope Tim Ryan actually does get a shot to be president one day, or just even like really get a shot to be seen. Yo, yo, yo! What about this? Buddha judge. I like Buddha Judge. Now I, you got a gay dude and a Jewish dude running. That's a little. That, that might, might be, be a little, little wild. Much for America. But it's a little blue chew. It's a, <laughs> a little hard. A little hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard, bro. I don't know, man. It's a little, <laughs> that's a tough one to get through. <laughs> dude, it might be a little difficult. This is kind of fun playing. It is. It yeah, is. Can like you a, really go from mayor game, to right? vice president, though? Yeah. Why not? Because you can go from architect, or not architect, real estate guy to vice president. So you can. You know why but you Indiana feel that way? Not that exactly. This, you feel that way because he's from Indiana. Because yeah. man, New York, you're like, oh, he ready. Man, California, oh, he ready. You, but mean, man, New York, you like, I mean, man, South Bend, Indiana, you're like, eh. And also, he, Indiana he as a off state is military. Worth that much. Military. He checks off diversity. He checks off intelligent and poignant, but he's also center. He's kind of center. He was very, he last is. night, he was very moderate. Very. He's moderate. Yeah, he's a reasonable yeah. dude. And he's Southern. Now you bring... I like Mayor Pete. I mean, I have no problems with Mayor Pete. I actually like Mayor Pete. And I like the... You know, I know he doesn't like to lean into it, but I like the fact that he's gay. And mm -hmm. the reason I like the fact that he's gay is because I understand that he understands marginalization. Mm -hmm. He understands being oppressed. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Even though the struggles are different. Sure. It still like resonates with that's him. That's it. I dig it. He's very presidential too. Out of all the candidates on the mic, he kind of has that. He got it. That classic. He body yeah. Beto. I don't he, need a. I don't is need he you presidential? to teach me. He strikes me as presidential in the classical sense. Absolutely. He's been in so many people's Oval Office. Let's pay some bills, man. I got a piece. Don't scratch that. That was good. If you caught it, you caught it. <laughs> Guys. Guys. <laughs> Coming around. You know that sting you feel every time you pay an overdraft fee. Well, let me pour some salt in the wound. Big banks make their $33 billion off of the overdraft fees they charge us each year. That's what the Dave app is here to stop. Don't you want to stop that? Dave is the number one budgeting app in America because it saves you from overdraft fees, tells you about upking bills, and can advance you up to $75 from your next paycheck with no credit check and no interest. You hear that? The Dave app. If you get it, and it just costs a dollar a month, that's just $1 a month, that's $12 a year, which is way less than any overdraft fee that you'll ever have, and you'll never have to pay one again because the Dave app got you covered. Dave will help you budget for upcoming expenses, text you if you're spending too much, and if you need cash, fa cash fast, advance you $75 in just 90 seconds. Mark Cuban is an investor in Dave because he got crushed by overdraft fees in his 20s and wants you to never pay an overdraft fee again. Three million people already use Dave to save up to $1,000 a year in overdraft fees. Think about that. You spend $12, you save $1,000. That's not bad. That's why it's the number one budgeting app in the App Store. Go to dave.com slash idiots. It really helps the show if you let them know you heard it here. By the way, then download Dave and never pay another overdraft fee again. It's immediate savings. Go now to dave.com slash idiots. Spell just like it sounds. D-A-V-E dot com slash idiots this episode is also brought to you by squarespace you turn your dream into reality with squarespace squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project whether you're looking to start a new business showcase your work publish content sell products and more squarespace is the tool for you if you have a business and you do not have a website you do not have a business in the eyes of the people people need a home people need to qualify you people need to prove that they, that you are real, that you are legit. The first thing we do is we Google something. Hey, you got to check out this restaurant, Google. Hey, you got to check out this show, Google. Hey, you got to check out this product, Google. Make sure that you are Googleable. 
With beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks, you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online, and analytics help you grow your site in real time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box, and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple, and you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people from designers to lawyers, artists to gamers, even restaurants and gyms to turn great ideas into something real head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial and then when you're ready to launch you just use the offer code idiot to save 10 percent off your first purchase of a website or domain that's squarespace.com slash idiot i like saying idiot like that offer code idiot now let's get back to the show Hey, listen, man, uh, I just want to tell y'all, once again, I'll be at South Carolina State this weekend for homecoming, and then October 28th, I'll be at Winthrop University with Marianne Williamson and uh, Michelle Williams talking about my favorite subject, mental health. Um, I don't know where the fuck Andrew went. We took a brilliant idiot's bathroom break. Uh, I went to do a number one. Um, he must be doing a number five because he's been in there for a long motherfucking time. So I'm just wrapping this thing up, man. And um, I did want to have a conversation about uh, like mental health because like I was saying earlier when Joe Coy was here, like people, oh, there go Andrew. People will be talking about, um, we got to wrap up because we got to get out of here shows. But I was, I was talking about... <laughs> I just took the shit, bro. It was something. It was crazy. I laid it down, dude. Damn. Use toilet paper and everything, bro. My guy. Listen, I was talking about what? mental health and like how um, I feel mentally healthier. You feel you feel empty. That. I was just blocked up. But I, I was just saying how like <laughs> you see a lot of people now. They'll be saying things to me like, oh, you talk about oh, anxiety too much or you talk about depression too much or you talk about mental health too much. Or they'll yeah. be like, um, you know, everybody's everybody's doing this now as like a talking point or like a marketing right. ploy. And I will simply tell you all this. If for so long there was a stigma around something mm -hmm. and you have people, you know, uh, speaking speaking about this thing mental health because they're trying to eradicate the stigma because like I always say the only way that we can eradicate the stigma around mental health is for everybody to tell their stories if we're creating safe spaces and making people comfortable enough to tell their stories of course you're going to have a bunch of stories you digital fucking dickheads yeah like it's just common goddamn sense like I hate when something good is happening something positive is happening and everybody all of a sudden has to try to strike it down or mm. act like the intentions around it aren't pure or say things like everybody talking about anxiety now that's probably because anxiety is like the fastest growing mental illness in the country yeah right now and probably social media has a lot of a lot to do with that but just in general Bro. if people are feeling comfortable about sharing their their their, their 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 battles with mental health and they're feeling feeling comfortable about talking about going to therapy and all of that good stuff like that why are you knocking it 100 percent. i sure <laughs> wish chris uh you know i sure wish chris you wish that people would talk about lyme's disease yes <laughs> Chris, you can be that person. Yo, but uh, I see a lot of people in the comments, you know, like someone was like, Chris, Chris's uh, limes must have gone to stage three with this bullshit with the... Uh, oh, Chris, soundboard. you're faking your Lyme disease. Let's be honest. I, I really, That's a whole I fucking re hustle. You I really, really think Chris got Lyme disease? I really wish that was the case. Come on, dog. I would, I would happily come out and admit it was all a fucking... He's genius. Why would you lie about that? Yeah, he got a lie, bro. Lyme disease. You can't Lyme fire disease someone. Hot. You can't fire someone who got Lyme disease, Charlie. Right, that's a lawsuit. How are we gonna fire this guy who that's got Lyme lawsuit. disease? Easily, I don't know nothing about it, so I don't know how bad it is. Just like Hong Kong and China, <laughs> I give a. F I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. We'll educate now, you. Don't now, we? if you hit me with some of the stuff I know, I feel bad for him. You like, might have sickle cell, Chris. Like Lyme disease, I'm like get him a Corona with that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will take my Corona with a little side of lime. Disease. Yo, right. <laughs> real talk, Chris. Can you just put your pinky in our Coronas and all of a sudden it tastes hey. better? <laughs> That's why we all keep you around. Just put that little pinky and give us a flavor. Hey. Then we get to drink hey. that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so saying, let, it's, it's, it's be like lemon and Chris soda. Yo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Instead of lemon lime. I know. Who's lemon lime? Sprite? Yo, you half a Sprite. Ooh, half you a half sprite. a Sprite. <laughs> Yo, you are half a Sprite, Chris. It's actually plural, limes. It's limes? Oh, limes. So you got more than one. Yeah. I think I might have that reversed. Get them two Coronas. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> 
kill Chris. You don't got Lyme disease. That's in your head. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. Dude, think about it. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know anybody else with it. I Googled it and your picture came up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> How rare is it? Is it rare? Yo, it's pretty rare, dog. For real? You got a rare disease, Chris. Uh, yeah, it's fairly rare now. Is it contagious? No, it's not contagious. Um, unfortunately, it's becoming more widespread as uh, more ticks spread throughout the East Coast. So oh, it's through ticks. Be careful out there, people. Bro, I grew up around ticks, bro. And, and never he doesn't caught have that any shit. Lyme disease. I used to pull them off dogs, bro. Yeah, it, 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 it's basically I centered on a dog with Lyme disease. Yeah, there are a lot of dogs in New York City with Lyme disease. In fact, the only uh, approved uh, vaccination against Lyme disease is for dogs. Why didn't they use that for humans, too? Uh, they started it, and then a couple of people got cancer. It was controversial, and they shut down the vaccine. And now people are pushing for them to bring it back, actually. Yeah, because you can cure cancer. You can't cure Lyme's. Well, if you get it early enough, you can. But it's too late for you? I can send some ticks over to your house. You can, you can test, you can test I'm them. I'm going to be honest with you, Chris. Beach house, baby. I'm Chris, out Fire here with Island, where I caught that. I know. Chris, Chris I'm going to be honest there. with you. Yeah. Your, 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 your soliloquy was trash just now. Like, I don't, I don't feel a case for Lyme disease at all. I feel no empathy. I don't even know what soliloquy is, and I felt it was trash. Uh, I'm not looking for empathy. That's all right. <laughs> you didn't convince me. Yeah. I don't, that's Yo, we gotta, the like, let's, let's come harder. Charlamagne, can you help him with the marketing? Charlamagne, you're a marketing, you're a marketing maven. Yes. Can you help Chris market his Lyme disease? I don't want to market better? my Chris, Lyme disease. Please, can you Chris please? has a very, Chris we, has the type of face that you can have a lot of empathy for, right? Yes. Like, just. Millhouse. You got Exactly. Just yeah. look, st like, look like this. <laughs> yeah. Put your hands on the table yeah. and stare straight at the camera. Yeah. Say hi. <laughs> Wait, you keep going and I'm going to just do background music. Keep going. Okay. Hi. Do we have to get out of here at two o'clock? My name is Chris Moreau. <laughs> In the arms of <laughs> I an am angel. The face of Lyme disease. I am from here. what Lyme disease looks like. <laughs> it's it's not Lyme. It's Lyme's. <laughs> and I have it. <laughs> if you want to help people like me, <laughs> donate a quarter. The 1 567 Lyme's. That's Lyme's with an S. In the urban community, it's Lyme's with a Z. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, did you see the Ronald Reagan Jr. commercial last night? No. For atheism? No. Holy it? shit. That's how we got to end this motherfucker. Right, Ronald Reagan Jr. did a commercial for atheism. And at the end, he goes, hi. He goes, and I'm Ronald Reagan Jr. And I'm not scared of hell. Yo, that shit was wild. Well, you must not be if you don't believe in it. It was during the debate. Yeah, that's a little crazy, bro. That's a little crazy. That shit was like a Sandals Resort commercial for hell. <laughs> for hell. It was. It was like, oh, okay. Hell look popping. Let's insert that. Um, but I'm done. As Guys, always. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. As always. If you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. And listen, uh, for everybody out there that is dealing with their mental health issues, man, you need somebody to talk to. Whatever struggles you're facing, it doesn't matter if it's depression, anxiety, trauma, grief, BetterHelp can connect you with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist. And anything you share is completely confidential. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Our listeners even get 10% off your first month with the discount code IDIOTS. So why not get started? Simply go to BetterHelp.com slash IDIOTS and fill out a questionnaire to get matched with a counselor you'll love today.